two um, elderly Jewish gentlemen are sitting on a park bench as they have for many, many years. It's a daily ritual. And um, one of the uh, fellows says, um, you know, uh, Herb, I, I uh, would like to venture a, a wager. Herb says, please, Tommy, it's enough already with the wagering. He says, no, no, Herb, I got this. You like this. I, um, I will wager that I can guess your age within a day. Herb says, well, that's nonsense. Uh, don't waste your money. You're an idiot. Tommy says, you know, although I resemble that remark, I still would like to put the wager forward. In fact, $100. Oh, my God, Herb says. You're a lunatic. I'm happy to take your cash. Go ahead. Guess away. And uh, Tommy says, well, in order to do this, I'm going to need a little assistance from you. I'm, Herb says, I'm, I'm clamming up on you, pal. I'm not going to say words. No, you don't need to speak. Just if you wouldn't mind just dropping your drawers. Herb says, enough of the funny. Let's just have a bag lunch and forget this whole thing. And he says, no, no. I need you to drop your drawers and then bend over the bench a little bit. I need to check something. Herb says, listen, Tom, honestly, you've known each other 62 years, and I had no idea you had these feelings. And you're fine, Herb, just seriously. I'd like the $100, so go ahead and drop your pants and bend over. You're not going to get my money unless you do. And that's how he gets Herb, of course, who drops his pants and bends over the bench. And then Tommy proceeds to check back there a certain crevice, orifice, if you will. Herb gets a little disturbed. What are you looking like, uh, rings on a tree? What are you searching for back there, Mr. Spock? He says, no, no, just a second. All right, I'm finished. Herb rushes, he puts up his pants, sits back down on the bench, slightly more red in the cheeks, and says, OK, Tommy, here's your guess. Let's hear it. Tommy says, um, you'll be 81 a week Tuesday. Herb says, holy shit, I can't believe I lost this bet. How did you, how could you possibly have known that? Tommy says, you told me yesterday. Welcome back, one and all, to Kevin Pollack's Chat Show. I am Bizarrely Chat Show. So nice of you to join us. If, in fact, you're with us live, welcome. If you're catching up with us uh, after the fact on your iTunes or the various portals available to you, welcome. Please enjoy and then tell everyone you've ever met. This is uh, episode 65, they're telling me, those who keep track of such nonsense. Um, the whole library is uh, going to debut... Uh, we have a release date now on the Amazon uh, for your uh, rentals and your downloads and your video on demand and all those things. Um, those of you that still collect DVDs. Your computer is not buffering. Um, October 26th. Now, I'm only assuming that's going to change. So uh, put it in pencil. Put it in pencil in your calendar would be my suggestion. Um, just back from Seattle. Had a lovely weekend there. What a fine place when it's not raining. And indeed, it did not rain yesterday. And I saw the people of Seattle walking around as if they were expecting zombies. No, no, that's just blue sky. I informed them, and they laughed in my face. But uh, it was gorgeous yesterday, and then raining uh, on the way there and on the way home. Who cares? But uh, the Parlor Live was a lovely venue. I enjoyed myself tremendously. Uh, had four uh, wonderful shows there, and I can't wait to go back. And I actually mean that. Um, we, uh, we also have a new iPhone app. Wait for it. Yes. No, never mind. There's a new iPhone app, a Kevin Pollock iPhone app for the iPad and the iPhone, for those of you eyeing. Um, so uh, just go to, uh, to your app section on your iTunes and look for that. I announced on Twitter that I was going to launch this little item. 
it's got daily updates. I'm doing video blogs, and they've got my whole Twitter feed, and there's news items off the uh, the interwebs. It's all kinds of crap and latest stuff that you can do and play along with. And I, I'm uh, giving away some free ones, and I say free because otherwise, they're 99 cents. <laughs> I know. It's a crazy number. Um, so at Michael underscore Parsons, at Ryan Farmer, at Azric, and at Steve Lilly, congratulations. I'll be DMing you soon on the Twitter, uh, personally congratulating you. But here it is live on the show. You've just uh, picked up yourself a, a free Kevin Pollack app. <laughs> Did you ever think such a ridiculous thing would be said? There you have it. Uh, my Judge Reinhold app. That's I go I over know. to uh, Jamie huh? and Sam now, and I want to yeah. know... Uh, Where's how, that app? How, what was that, Jamie? Where's my Judge Reinhold app? You uh, offered up something that was very funny today, and, and uh, it was... The, and you overshadowed it, what, and now everyone's making fun of leave me. Leave that part behind, but what was the... What was, I what don't did even you, care anymore. Yes, I do. It was a theme <laughs> song? What, what song? I was making a playlist mm -hmm. of songs that reminded me of Judge Reinhold. And uh, the top two were... The heat is on. The heat is on. And the Cars uh, song from a. Uh, oh, moving in stereo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, Sammy, do you have a, a selection? Of what would be a theme song for Judge Reinhold? Judge Reinhold, uh, Axel F. Axel yeah. F. That's Definitely. a good one. Do, and I, I picked do, a song do, from do, Vice do, Versa. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Vice Versa. <laughs> that was one of 16 movies where a father and son yes. switched uh, souls. <laughs> those were those were trading like like baseball cards in yeah. the 80s. <laughs> it's almost time for another one. It's they did. What Matthew, didn't Perry? They Matthew Perry what? was in, so ah, yeah. Ah, crap. Oh, my God. And High School Musical guy. Yeah. <sighs> Son of a bitch. That could have been you. <laughs> could have been me. I'm 105 referring to him Why as High School Musical guy. Why do you guys, you guys guy. should do one? Uh, Sammy, we've we actually, <laughs> there's a web series in the works that we <laughs> talked about. It's long in the works. <laughs> uh, Sammy, how was your weekend? You had a birthday with the Eve? I did, yes. It was my lovely girlfriend's uh, birthday this past weekend. We had 22? A, uh, sure. We had a fantastic celebration. <laughs> as what long you as you uh, gave sure. me a number that's over legal age, then I'm not going to disagree with you. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we had a great celebration, but I'd like to talk a little bit about, a little bit about work. Would you? Mm-hmm. All right. Real quick. Uh, I had not one, not two, but three three auditions this past week for a film which I am certain I'm not going to get. And that's the only reason I'm going to discuss it. Oh. Because it has the best title of any film I think I've ever auditioned for wow. in my storied career. Nice setup. Booty Patrol, colon, <laughs> The Quest for the Golden Booty. <laughs> oh this is a real script <laughs> with real writers and a real director. Okay, Sammy, yeah. it's never been so clear to me mm -hmm. as it is right now. Mm -hmm. We need to get you gainfully employed elsewhere. Seriously. Yeah. Well, here's the good news. The uh -huh. light at the end of the tunnel is the good people over at NCIS mm. have decided to employ me this week. Have they? They have. You're going to be over there with the Mark Harmon? With the Mark Harmon and the Lauren Holly. Please give them my best. I certainly will. Love that crazy show. It's like one of the most watched shows in the history of time. I believe you are correct. Well, congratulations. Where do they shoot that? Still in San Francisco? Valencia. No, Valencia, of course. That's so what practically I meant. San Francisco. Yeah, when I said San Francisco, <laughs> I meant the sister city, Valencia. <laughs> um, and now it's time, believe it or not, to involve you, the viewers. Once again, a little section we like to call Ask Kevin. Ask Kevin. There it is. Uh, if you have questions, by the way, uh, feel free to send them to contact at kevinpollockschatshow.com. This first Ask Kevin is from Sketchball Ed. Hmm, I have my suspicions about that name. Kevin, have there been any thoughts, talks, plans, etc., to release either in its entirety or in selective fashion DVD volumes of the chat show for home viewings? One thing I wish to do is show them Show them what the show is, but cannot, as many of my friends do not have internet or computer access. Do they have English skills? Additionally, bonus features, how the show was formed and how it is run in retrospective looks on past episodes by you and your guests of that episode would be interesting to see as well. Keep on with your bad self, Sketch Ed. P.S. to Sam, you look like, I'm not gonna read that. That's an insult. A cuddly hobbit minus a machine gun, you I'm... son of a bitch, Sketch Ed. <laughs> you and all your Amish friends can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> wow. And there you have it. Um, in answer to your question, <laughs> I think I just covered it four minutes ago. 
yes, our deal with Amazon is secure, and uh, uh, you can ha you can sit your friends down without a computer and uh, watch the show soon. Although I just saw a commercial for um, uh, for the Best Buy where they're selling TVs now that have uh, internet on the remote control. The thing we've been talking about for the last year or so is now here in commercial form, anyways. It's a great commercial where the salesman says to a kid, you like this TV? What are you on the Twitter? Pulls up Twitter from the remote. What are you on the Twitter? Uh, <laughs> they allow old Jews to be in Best Buy commercials. Uh, on to the next, ask Kevin. Urgent, concern of, on my part. Uh, this is from Me Real. Hi, Kevin, in parentheses, fuckface. We're off to a good start. <laughs> this is more of a concern than a question then fuck you. Oh wait, I've noticed by listening to your show while I'm working that when you talk slow, you sound like Jack Benny, and when you talk more casual, you sound like Charlie Sheen. That's all I'm saying. Can't you just sound like yourself? <laughs> I can finally sleep good at night after getting that off my chest. Huge fan of the show, over and out, I get out of your face. Um, I'll have a cheese having. <laughs> I think is appropriate here. I sound like Charlie Sheen or Jack Benny. Hmm. Now cut that out. It's terrible. I can't even do Jack Benny. How could I? How could I sound like him on accident? I don't think you're uh, drinking from the same Kool-Aid as the rest of us. But all right. Thanks for getting that off your chest, and feel free to keep us in contact with the rest of your concerns and/or questions. This next one is from C. Cullen. Hi, Kevin. I'm new to watching your show, so forgive me if this was asked before. Uh, you sound like Charlie Sheen. No. Does Larry <laughs> know about the game, and what does he think about it? It's very funny. Thanks, Cecilia. Um, to my knowledge, Larry King does not know about the Larry King game. And also, so uh, that is the answer to your question, I'm afraid. He does not know about it. If anyone has, has news to the contrary, I'd love to hear it. Um, I've been getting a lot of tweets and emails, actually, about uh, after Larry's announcement that he's officially leaving the airwaves. What is it? Do we have a date? Does anybody rem hmm? October um, sometime, maybe? Mm -hmm. Strictly on a need-to-care basis um, <laughs> when he's leaving. Anyways, if everyone's asking me if I'm going to do, uh, what's the new guy's name? Again, on a need-to-care basis. Piers Morgan? Sure, Piers Morgan. Am I going to do the uh, Piers Morgan game? <laughs> How dare you? Um, Larry King earned the Larry King game, and it was a creation from our very own Jamie Foxx uh, because it was funny. Pierce Damn Morgan. Damn funny. Damn funny. Pierce Morgan, on the other hand, anyone know anything? Am I in the dark? Am I an idiot? Am I in a cave? He wasn't born in this country. Pierce His Morgan. His name sounds made up. It does sound made up, or on a rum bottle, and also, I'm, I've never heard, I'll go with Pierce Morgan to block. Nor will I. Uh, and now, speaking of the Larry King game, it's time for this week's winner. Uh, this week's winner is uh, Ken Campbell? Sure. And Ken Campbell writes the following. I love eating asparagus. When I pee, it reminds me of that weekend with Angie Dickinson. Idler's Glory, North Carolina, you're on the line. Thank you, Kenny Campbell from Harlem, New York City. Uh, please send your address, your shipping address, Ken Campbell, so that we can send you off a lovely t-shirt that looks a little something like this. Oh, look at that. Speaking of which, for those of you who have been asking about the Kevin Pollock's Chat Show t-shirt, as well as the delightful mug with a Pakistani version of me, um, you can now get them at epromos.com. Mm -hmm. In fact, use this promo code well, there is no promo code. We, promo code. We can make one up. Maybe in honor of today's guest, the promo code should be, what happened? Yeah, that's the promo code from now on. <laughs> <laughs> if that actually worked, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, to get 10% off, epromos.com. Get yourself a t-shirt or a mug or anything with the Kevin Pollock Chat Show logo on it is available to you at epromos.com. Much thanks to them for that. That is all I can stall. That is all I can do. Uh, I can, I can, uh, yes. I would like to now bring our guest into the show. Uh, I have uh, been a fan of this man since, um, well, the late 70s, which is, 
going on, uh, on, uh, <laughs> well, you do the math. I think we're talking about <laughs> 31 years. Uh, and I will say that um, I have respected his work. I have thought of him as a great thespian, while most people have thought of him uh, as, a, as a very diverse uh, comedian and actor. I've, I've actually enjoyed some of his more uh, serious work and consider him to be one of the more talented, if not serious, thespians. Please welcome Mr. Fred Willard. <laughs> Kevin, I'm so glad you mentioned a t-shirt because I really need a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> thank you. You know, this reminds me of your... <laughs> First of all, I just want to say this is a first, and uh, I, don't know. I was going to I was going to ask you about your amazing uh, work. Not no, no, no! Don't be. Are you kidding? I was going to ask. Your shirt off, the bra, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about your work in Youth in Revolt because I loved it so. Oh, did you really? That I did, cool. and then you just did one of the scenes just now oh, with, with the mean. shirt off. <laughs> yeah. Was that your idea in that no, movie? No. Uh, um, I, no, it was just all written, and I got there, and for the first three days, all I did is lay on the floor with my shirt off, and after a while, you, I think the other actors are in the scene, but I think, who is this? What, Fred Willard is here. Is he just lying on the floor for three days? Um, What's the matter with it, him? Yeah, it was a fun movie. Uh, um, yeah, do you like doing the dramatic work? Yes. You must, right? Yes. I have a friend who had an interesting observation. He said, you know, it's so much easier to do dramatic stuff than it is comedy. Comedy, you've got to get a laugh. Yeah. Dramatic, if it doesn't work, you know, it's just uh, very subjective. I didn't like his portrayal. Well, you know, maybe he is taking a different, uh, different way. But to be funny, there's only one. It's when the cameras stop rolling, then you hear the, the crew laugh. Yeah. It's all oh, good. Yeah, yeah. You know they have to be silent during the take. So yeah. there's a lot of anticipation on the actor's part yeah. when they say cut. Yeah. Is the laugh and, coming or isn't it? And it's always a pleasant surprise if there is. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise I mean, you have to speaking wait. Speaking of the different ways Please. you can take for acting, yeah. I just saw, I was watching the, like, the history of Warner Brothers, one of those. Uh, some of the people who were considered great actors at the time, you look back and it's embarrassing. I mean, Marlon Brando uh -huh. in um, uh, Stella, it's, I guess we've seen it for so long, but you actually are embarrassed. It's like seeing James Dean in East of Eden. He's, right. he's oh, ooh, that's, this, this is awful. But at the time, <laughs> they, they were just groundbreaking. It was, it was the, the great new... Uh, yeah type of acting. Right, exactly. It was a new type of acting, which then William Shatner did uh, in the 60s as well, which is that, um, what is that, furniture? I'll take a bite. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and you're right, James Dean was bigger than life. So big. And truly ridiculous. Uh -huh. in, uh -huh. When everyone else around him was wildly stoic and centered uh -huh. and very at peace, and then there was this lunatic bouncing off the walls. Yes. And at the time, everyone said, oh my God, it's art. And he's brilliant, and was an overnight uh, uh, a new acting. It was, it was a Strasbourg, yeah. there, the method acting. You studied a little bit of uh, the acting in New York as a youngster. Well, not, well, um, what I did, I got to New York, uh -huh. and I didn't know uh, what to do. I thought I had a great idea. I said, I'll be a disc jockey. Sure. Because I thought at the time in the, of the old days, where here's a platter I just discovered. I'm going to spin this one. Yeah. A young man named Elvis Presley. What a funny name. But then I found out <laughs> that this time it was all programmed, the, yeah. the, the top 40. So I said, what am I going to do? I think maybe I'll be an actor. So I decided to go to an acting school. And every acting school I went to, uh, I, to the interview, they all had scene study. Yeah. A scene study, an improvisation. I said, do you ever have a showcase where invite people? Oh, no. Oh no, we never had, you know, you don't showcase your work. So I finally found a theater called Showcase Theater. Nice. That every 10 weeks, they would have a showcase and invite people, you know, directors. Yeah. And I said, that's what I need. So I went there and it was, it was wonderful. It was funny, they, it was a, a couple who had a one bedroom apartment and their living room had been turned into a, a stage. There was a stage and, and, and with the seats. The smallest stage ever. For, yes, and, and our green room would be their bedroom. You know, we were waiting to go on. Sure. But the important thing that I always tell people about it, acting, go to an acting school, you don't learn anything, but you, you network with other people. Yeah. You meet people, you find out what they're doing. Someone comes in and say, hey, they're casting for something. But it's just to, to jump into the game, right. just to get going. That is probably one of the great things about it, is the networking. 
No question. Yeah, you, you meet people and, you meet, and then you run into them years later and you, what they're doing and, yeah. and something else. But at the time, it's you, you'll find out about possible auditions. Exactly, and, yes. Uh, and, and, and where to go and where to be seen, yes. if that's what you want. Were you seeing much theater as a theater goer at the time? Oh, I would go. At, back then, when I first got to New York, uh, you know, the prices were uh, out of reach. It was, uh, you know, $5.70 for uh -huh. a dramatic, six ninety for a musical. Um, <laughs> so what you do is go in at intermission. And right. I, there's a whole, a whole art to that. Second half it? What are they? Second, uh, second act Second it, act think. it, right. You, you dress up and you go down and you stand on the fringe of the crowd. And if you can find a, a playbill. And then wait till everyone goes back in and you can't walk in and look around. You head right in. Right. And I was only stopped once and that's when I hesitated and looked around and you hear that thing you don't want to hear. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all that's never good. No. Nothing good comes from excuse me, sir. <laughs> or can I help you? <laughs> you don't want to, no. can I help you? But to go back to James Dean and Marlon Brando, you probably know this, why they were so earth shaking. Because back in the, in the 30s, once sound came in, Everyone was kind of like that. The voices were very high, and I don't know why. Uh, the, yeah. Particularly the news people, but the actors too. In the early '30s, it was very high. It's so true. Mm -hmm. They, uh, <laughs> it was a very bizarre uh, happenstance or occurrence that was. You're right. Uh, I think it was something about the sound picked up the high register a little better. They hadn't created the bass uh, part of the recording system, maybe, because yes. they couldn't have all sounded like Mickey Mouse, but it no. seemed like it. When you look at the stuff, they all, yeah. uh, other than Al Jolson, I'm just thinking, everyone else, um, a lot of people, yeah. They, they, uh, so do you think these guys got a little attention also because they had a booming voice of some kind? Well, no, they, then, then we got into Clark Gable, late 30s and yeah. early 40s. And uh, it got a little more realistic, but suddenly Marlon Brando and James Dean were just very, just all over and the raw emotions coming out. Yeah. So they just made a big uh, splash. Yeah, and, and uh, I was always uh, uh, annoyed that people like Marlon Brando, and there's been others, were so put out by their fame. It just really <laughs> bothered them. Yes. Um, I, I, uh, it just seems not only it's such a waste, obviously, to have that kind of talent and also that much of an audience who loves you, mm -hmm. it's not so much, um, you know, disregard or dismissing the audience. It seemed like it was a genuine unhappiness that it made yes. him truly depressed. Yes, and uh, it's worse than 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 someone who's arrogant. Yes, it's someone who can't actually enjoy. That always. Um, it was very troublesome to me. I, I never understood the uh, the anger at being photographed. Oh God! In public. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I once had to hit a photographer because he refused to take my picture. <laughs> now, now we have. He something. turned away. I spun him around. <laughs> I guess I was too physical. <laughs> that was the first time you served time, wasn't it? <laughs> that was uh, your first sentencing. My first. Oh. Uh, you, you never. Uh... Incidentally, I just got a tweet that the, your story you told about the two gentlemen on the bench. Yes. It's already in development, and they're going <laughs> <laughs> to. They're Brothers. flushing it out, and it's going to go to Sundance. <laughs> That's one. Woody Allen was not interested. He didn't get it. But, he, didn't, uh, he didn't get it. No. But they're <laughs> no. going to get Larry David for the. Uh, uh, <laughs> You're on the Twitter. You've been on the Twitter now for for a little while. Yes, I guess my wife does most of that, uh -huh. but I, I'm kind of slowly. Uh, working into it, right? Um, your daughter is um, is she uh, in, into the Twitter? Oh, very much so. Really? And my grandson. I mean, he's. We're actually find ourselves asking him to figure out things. He's twelve years old. Oh, he's, he's, he's got yeah. it. He's got it all under control. Funny thing about being on the internet, I'm just barely getting into the internet. Right. And uh, my, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be. I can write scripts on the internet. But something's always go, going wrong, and I almost called my wife. So anyway, I just f discovered the Google, how you can find almost anything. So to make a long story short, I had... Actually, we like long stories. A, do you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Take your time. Hustler Magazine, August 1975, naked pictures of Jackie Kennedy. Now this is, where did they get them? It was, and I had this magazine for some, no, it's a true, Kevin, you're a kid, you're, you're blushing. He's blushing. No, Kevin, I'm not oh, blushing. blushing. I'm not blushing. I'm wondering, hustle. wondering, within minutes of finding out that Google exists. Well, here's the thing. That's what you go to? No, but this is a, that's kind of like it. So one day I go to get to see it. I said, I haven't seen that in a long time. Sure. I probably got it 25 years ago. It was gone. 
the magazine. I suspect my wife threw it out. <laughs> oh, do he you? doesn't need this, <laughs> not knowing. It's like your mom's throwing out a Hannes Wagner baseball card. These are <laughs> naked photos of Jackie Kennedy. <laughs> so I tried to get on the Google to, sure. to look up. I found out it was August 75. and I'm Googling. My wife found out. She says, you're like every man. The minute you get on the Google, you go for the pornography. <laughs> right. And it's not pornography. <laughs> It was, no. it was, what's that, 75, 35, 40 years ago. Jackie Kennedy is long gone, so there's a lot worse things you could Google. But I just, sure. and eventually I found it and bought it for $8.75. God bless you. And I don't want to tell you where I put it because my wife will find it. Well, this again, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should have it laminated. So this you baseball can't. <laughs> with Babe Ruth, someone named Babe Ruth signed it. Yeah. That's going in the Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you uh, you schooled uh, in in, a, in military yeah. uh, institutes, as yeah, it were. Well, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, an interesting story. Um, I had a, 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 a my mother remarried. Had a, a, my father passed away, and I had a stepfather, and of course the wicked stepfather. And I was getting in mild little scrapes, nothing, you know, just really. And my mother started saying, "You're going away. Well, I'm going to send you to military school. You're going to go to military." So, um, as was the want of the, yeah, day, of yeah. the day. It was. They were very popular in military school. So they started sending catalogs, all these rough military schools, and I found one. It was called Kentucky Military Institute. After Christmas, the whole school moved down to Venice, Florida. Pictures of kids on the beach. <laughs> and I, so I said, hmm, I've looked over this catalog. I think this might be the school for me. So my last two years in high school, it was wonderful. And I, I, I went there. It was in Louisville, Kentucky. After Christmas, right. we took a train to Venice, Florida. It was great. Gorgeous. So then where to go to college? And I said, well, I don't, didn't feel like the time like I was a frat guy and I didn't want to drink beer. And uh, So I, I, there's a place called Virginia Military Institute. I said, well, I'll go there. It'll be kind of fun. It'll be kind of disciplined and kind of, because uh -huh. I've always been kind of focused on things. But it was very tough. It's the West Point of the South. Is and that it was right? really tough. Very military. Um, um, and you went into the military from Well, there. you had to. At the time, there was a draft. So after the, when you graduated, it went in. But I did not get a commission because I didn't go at officers training school between my junior and senior year because I wanted to play baseball. I was on a baseball team. So I spent then two years in the, uh, in the Army. Uh, was sent to Germany where I played baseball on the team. I hated it at the time, but I look back, it was wonderful right. to go to Germany. We played in Berlin and Hamburg and all. It was great. So you I mean, actually played on a touring baseball team within the military. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that must have been... It was a lot of fun. and It was called, uh, I forget, extra duty or something, but yeah. you just went away from your base and you were just put in a barracks and that's all you did is play baseball. Uh, but you had notions of a baseball career, maybe. Oh, as a kid, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm still kind of uh, harboring a little. I've given up the big league dream, but still pro. <laughs> just to be pro. To you get like out to there be in the farm day. league? Yeah. yeah. I'm hitting a little over 400 at the batting cage out in Sepulveda. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I'm not, where most guys hit eight, 900, but i am still got that 400. Uh -huh. it's, uh, some guy, uh, some comic, I forgot which I ran into with the batting cage. I said, oh, you like to go bat? He says, yeah. I've been lately. I've been working that uh, batting machine for a walk. Working for a base on balls. Yeah. yeah, had a good eye. Yeah, yeah. Go make it. Make him wait. Wow. Uh, yes, I, I really did want to be a baseball player. Did you player. have a favorite team? Well, I was from Cleveland, so the Cleveland Indians, of course. Right. And um, they'd only won. Uh, they'd won the, a World Series in 1920. They played the Brooklyn Dodgers. Sure. That was the first uh, unassisted triple play. Uh, first Grand Slam home run in a, in a World Series. Then they won wow. in, in 1948, they won the World Series. They beat the Boston Braves. They have never again won a World Series. They got in in 54. That's the one that Willie Mays over the shoulder catch. They lost four straight. And I think they were in the 90s and got beaten. And, and uh, they don't have a great record, so I don't have much sympathy for the Cubs fans <coughs> and the Red Sox fans. Who? Cleveland just doesn't, never gets there. Sammy? <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. as a diehard Cubs fan. You uh, you what? Diehard Cubs fan. You are well. Um, yeah. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> they're not doing well again this year, are no, they? No, neither is Cleveland. So no, I know that. <laughs> you know, let's not point fingers, Fred. Uh, but uh, come on, we have it harder than anyone. We haven't won the World Series since 1908. We haven't even gotten to play since 1945. 45. Who did they play against in 45? Uh, Detroit. You're right. Impressive. I'm a, I'm a ba old time baseball fan. I, for my birthday, I just got a book: the D 1945 Detroit Tigers, the last war year, the teams in the last oh, war. Oh wow! Which was a very interesting period. World War II. So many players went off to the war. Right. 
1944, they had the one-armed baseball player, Pete Gray. I don't know if you ever heard about that. Literally, this, you're smiling like it's a joke. No, I'm What's not. the punchline? He had one arm and... <laughs> <laughs> he pitched with it. <laughs> <laughs> From the shoulder. Yeah. I just read about a, a man who has no arms and no legs, and he's swimming the English Channel. Right. Isn't that strange? Someone t told me about this, I mean, actually. that's very... That's ambition. <laughs> kind of senseless ambition. <laughs> <laughs> it's like have a, a, a playing uh, a football lineman has no legs. I mean, you got to root for his spirit. But it's like that moment in Monty Python, the, the, the Black Knight, when they chop off. Chop, yeah, and he Come keeps back, going. Coward. Yeah. <laughs> it is a bit of that. Swimming I can do it. I'll swim the channel. Just carry me over there. <laughs> yeah. Grease up my body. You know, floating the English Channel is not quite the same. This is horrible what we're talking about. <laughs> no, it's interesting if you're a Terrible. sports fan. But yeah, let's get back to that. One player played in 19... Wait, I forget what year. 45. Right. 45. Because the Browns, I'm just a no, well no, of great. baseball this, this trip. Great. 44, the Cleveland, uh, the St. Louis Browns, the only World Series they were in, they played the St. Louis Cardinals. They played in the same park, the World Series. The next year, Pete Gray came up. He'd, he'd been in AAA, and he was not bad. Right. Hit like 230, 240. And the other players didn't like him and were abusive of him. The guy with one arm hit with 240? With one arm. They didn't because they thought he was taking the place. Uh, he, he was kind of a novelty. But he was, he was, he was uh, no, but he could play. He was pretty good. He'd, he'd get hits. He would catch the ball. But uh, uh, a lot he, of the guys came back from the war and got right back into 40, Yeah, 45, I think they had to bring him back. You know, but then they had so many players. Yeah. Uh, and yet you follow, this is interesting, then we'll get off of the old... During but it's a war, passion of yours. Players, really. players would would do a certain uh, a certain little ability. When the other major leaguers came back, they didn't do any better or any worse. It was just kind of it, oh, I really? guess the, the 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 competition is just always you know when there's an injury in pro football, baseball, anything there, the people could take their place. You see, it's happening with the Dodgers now. They're losing, but they're bringing up these rookies yeah. who are doing great, hitting home runs and uh, yeah, given the opportunity. So it's very, very tough. Yeah, yeah. It's well, like acting, you know. You don't. You turn down a job. Oh, too bad. Oh, here's another guy. You know, right in there. They're well, that's how cry. they get you in the negotiation. Yeah, yeah. Well, we would yeah. love you for this. You know, at this price, <laughs> they 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 make you feel good about yourself by giving by making an <laughs> offer, and then your agent says. By the way, if I hear scale plus 10 one more time, <laughs> someone has to die. Really? Yeah. It's absurd. Uh, yeah, no one has, they, no, no money. Yeah, there's no money. Uh, until you visit some, uh, have their party at some producer's house or an agent's house, and it's like a small hotel. Right. You know where the money's going. Yeah. I, I, I don't, usually don't like to tell this story, but my agent got a, <laughs> a call from someone. He said, uh, or an email, he, he said, Mike, um, I'm a huge fan of Fred Willard, and I have a, a movie I've written, we're having a reading of it. And I think Fred is just wonderful, I've, I'm a, his biggest fan. I, it would be my honor if he'd even consider nice. doing the, ta the, the read. Sure. So uh, he didn't, my agent didn't get back to him for a day, and, and two days later, he got another email. Um, Never mind, we got someone else. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh I said, boy, that was quick. You're a huge fan. It's, I'd be so honored. But he'd written the part with me in mind, he claimed. Oh. Then never mind, we got someone else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. We got John Goodman. John, can John? <laughs> yeah, huge fan of his, too. Um, all right, so uh, after uh, a couple of years in the Army, you went to New York. You, you, you studied the theater in someone's one-bedroom apartment. Yes. And um, you were uh, second acting plays. And then, yes. uh, at some point, you find your way to Chicago. Well, here's what happened. In, during, in the, um, the acting class, there was a, a, another guy there. We had, he had a good sense of humor. We had joking around and making jokes and doing bits. And uh, one day, we saw an ad in, the, in the, one of those show business magazines. Right. You know, it was a casting for a play, no pay, no fee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, right. And, but they were doing a, a variety show, sketches sketch comics needed so we went down it was one of the first comedy mm. club type th things all ron carey you know ron carey sure. he was just starting out and all these comics would get together twice a week and trade jokes and it was, it was very unusual for the time uh, so we went in and, and the man said well, what can we do for you i said we said uh, well you need actors for a comedy review he said do you have your own material 
And uh, we said, no, he said, well, come back when you have a, write a sketch and come back. So we went away, we wrote a sketch and came back and did it. And this then is we came you back and the next week, Vic Greco? Vic Greco. Yeah. We did, and finally we had so many sketches, the guy decided not to do that show, he just did a show with our, our sketches. Wow. An evening with Greco and Willard. And we played uh, clubs in the village. Sure. They're all gone now. It was the phase two. Uh, the, the, it was just the, the, those clubs were just starting to, to grow. The right. folk singers were down there. Peter, Paul, and Mary were just getting together. And you do. Uh, I haven't even found Mary yet at that point. It was just no, Peter and Paul. Yeah. It, it, that's right. <laughs> right? But uh, I have to ask had you written sketches before? No. Um, I mean, this thing seemed like it no, just sort of. No, we just started writing sketches, so it must have, uh, you know, I, I don't know where it came from. And had you seen <clears throat> um, reviews? Or I something? was always a. You know, well, the first thing I saw that's really. Uh, impressed me. I don't know if you remember Spike Jones and his Absolutely. musical City Slickers. I, his show came to Cleveland once and I went down to see it. I'd never seen anything like it. Now I'm from Cleveland and they have the Cleveland Playhouse there and my folks, although not very theatrical, they, they had a subscription they would take me to plays. Nice. And I'd seen plays and also in Cleveland <clears throat> There were shows that would come through, Danny Kay, Jack Benny, they would come through, there'd be a movie and then the, the um, uh, the actual performer? Performer. Oh, wow. And you'd go in the morning and you'd, you'd, you'd watch the performer from the balcony. Then you'd, then people would leave and you'd move down and sit through the movie and you'd have a closer seat. You'd watch the performer again, people would leave and you'd, by the third show you'd be down about the 10th row. It was wonderful. Wow. Uh, but I saw Spike Jones and his City Slickers. I'd never seen anything like them because they were musical. They did spoofs of songs. They had funny things on the stage. That they, like they had a, a harpist, a lady with a harp, who sat on the stage. And you, after a while, you noticed she had never never played the harp. Never, <laughs> it, just the whole show, but no, no thing was you made about it. You must have been then, just a kid at that yeah. point. Yeah. And then they had a, a, like a little... Uh, dwarf or a midget came running across the stage carrying a rope and he pulled it and he disappeared and you watch and here he comes on the from the other end and that was so new to me so I love that kind of, of comedy right um, so we wrote sketches and we played in the clubs in the village and then we auditioned for a, a theater group up upstate New York called Green Mansions it was well known Carol Burnett had gone there and a lot of writers uh, and we auditioned they needed a second banana uh-huh the first banana was a comic named Larry Wild I don't know if you know him I'm it's not always important still... that the first banana banana in in your training days go on to to less of a career <laughs> yeah. than the second banana that always <laughs> makes me happy yeah yeah well they the, so they decided that they would we audition and they decided they would take us so we would do instead of one but they had to divide our, our money, so they paid us, uh, instead of $100 uh, for the whole summer, uh, I think we each got $50. You were two second bananas. Two second bananas. Wow. But the wonderful thing is I had an office job, and I got to quit my office job. Now, this was a big leap. Yes. Because my parents didn't know I wanted to be a performer. My office, I was working some kind of credit thing, and, and doing the, the, these nightclubs at night, the coffee house is really yeah. But they didn't uh, pay. No. Oh no. no, my God! They passed the hat afterwards. And uh, but uh, if one of our, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you were well, you, you were at a time clearly mm -hmm. when uh, there was sort of a new phase, a new sort of expression of comedy and, and yes, sketch. Yes. And to be in that in the, those early days, it's always come in waves. It seems like. Yeah. You know, like a, a good uh, 10, 15 years ago, alternative stand-up comedy started uh -huh. to sort of take over. And, and before that, the guys I was watching when I was young, uh, it went from straight monologists doing mo mother-in-law jokes mm -hmm. to a George Carlin and a Pryor mm -hmm. and, and forward-thinking Robert And then between Klein. that, Lenny Bruce, Jonathan Winters, Minda Nichols, me, yeah. Oh, so you're right, it is uh, yeah. a different way. And it seems like you, you were certainly catching a wave early on. We came in right after the wave of the Martin Lewis, you know, with a straight man Absolutely. and the funny guy. Right. Um, and you were part, you were ground floor without realizing it of what would become Nichols and May. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like at the time you were upstate New York, they were already, they had started. Oh, they, they had already made a, in fact, Mike Nichols was directing by this time. Oh, was that right? But, um, so we did very well, and then we started working in, in clubs, and in that, those days there were only about six or seven clubs around the country, the Hungry Eye in San Francisco, oh, yeah. the Gate of Horn. And then we just went on, and eventually our, our act, um, we, we broke up.
Right. And then we played Chicago, so I got a call to come in and audition for Second City in Chicago. Is that right? And I said, oh, geez, I can't, I can't improvise. You know, I, I'd seen Second City. I, I just loved them. They were very, so bright. But they all had beards and everything was, you know, <laughs> Severn Darden. They're doing these jokes about Kierkegaard. And, so, and I just, I said, I can't do that. But I went in and uh, they got us in a group. There were about 30 of us. And they'd say, okay, get up. To, who wants to get up? So I'd get up. And Robert Klein was there, too. He's completely unknown. And I, the, the first improv was something that it, I was supposed to be a musician at a coffee house or something, which is right, you know, it's oh, great. And it came off pretty well. Right. And I sat down. I got another one. It was pretty well. And by the end of the hour or so, they said, okay, we've got time for one more. And I said, oh, I'll get up. And um, wow, as most things, they offered me the, the part, and I said, well, I don't know. I've got other things going. But luckily, they, they said, well, we'll give you a week, and we'll call, and we'll hold a spot open for you. So I went, and I worked at Second City for a year. Wow. David Steinberg, Robert Klein. Um, and it was a great year. Yeah. And, um, well, you, you must have learned so much in such a short period of time. Yeah. From thinking that you weren't familiar with how to improvise. Yeah. To working well it's like anything if you do hollowed. it night after night pretty soon you, you lose all the uh, boundaries you don't think oh is this gonna sound dumb you just get out and start uh, doing stuff and, and after, you guys were writing sketches you would develop sketches through yes. the improv yeah isn't that the practice that, yeah, yeah. You'd, 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 and then you'd improvise them at the show if you go to Chicago see Second City it's a set show because improv scares me to death. I don't want to see people sweating on stage. It's a set show, a two-act <laughs> right. show. Then they'll say, we're going to come back in 20 minutes for an improvised set. That's where all the stuff happens, where they, their ideas they work on. And even now when I go back, I can't believe that some of these sketches came out of pure improvisation. So it's a, it's a wonderful group still, Second City, y yeah. Chicago. Did you uh, stay in contact at all with... Oh, yeah. I, I, I like to think I'm a good friends with Robert Klein. He lives in New York, and right. we get together once in a while. David Steinberg I run into out here. And it's kind of a big fraternity, Second City people. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of friends. Uh, who you know, and if anyone says I was at Second City, oh, what company? Oh, yeah, I remember I saw. Right. So it's um, an amazing institution. Yeah, it is. It now really they got a lot. That was when there was only a Second City in Chicago. Then there was the committee in San Francisco. Right. Now they have Upright Citizens Brigade, New Fantastic. York and L. Fantastic. Great people. They yeah. do great stuff. Uh, there's here in L. A. There's the Acme Comedy uh, Theater. They're good. Uh, really good young people coming up and improvising, doing sketches. Now you started one of your own, <clears throat> the uh, the the Moho. Well, it's a yeah, the Moho comedy group. My wife was in a writing writing group, right? Where people would bring in something they'd write, and you'd hand it out, and people would get up and they'd read it. And we left that, and she said, "Would it be fun to have just a comedy? Just it's all comedy." So we got a little theater in North Hollywood. It's NoHo. It's called the NoHo. Now you, you, New York has SoHo, NoHo. Sure. So we just, some suggest we call it the Moho because it was just before Christmas. It's called Moho. Uh -huh. So we've had it for years, and it meets once a week. And people bring in a comedy sketch, and you pass it out, and then you get up and do it. And it's either it's either wonderful or not too good. And but you're still experimenting and yeah. trying out, yeah. And then lately we started doing a show once a month, and that's great because some of the younger writers it, it, it enthuse them because then their stuff is up on the stage. Absolutely, or they're up on stage. Yeah, to stage it up once a month is fantastic. Yeah. If people want to uh, look up the dates, is there a website or something like mohos.com or something? I, or oh, I, we'll I, find I, out. I think it's at a theater called Bang B A N G on Fairfax. Okay. Great little theater. It's on the same block as Cantor's. Delhi. You look up, uh, it's usually on a Thursday night, the second or third Thursday, our next one sometime in October. But you find that you're still, I mean, some people have never been on stage, and I've been on stage a lot, but I'm still nervous. I, sometimes I'm more nervous than they are. Oh my God, am I going to forget? Because if you're up there and you forget a line, you, uh, yeah, it's, you know, good. It, it, it's funny the audience laughs, but still you want the joke to be what you're doing and yeah. not cracking up. So it's it's great experience, and you would notice for uh, it get the people more involved. They come in with sketches, and uh, I've, I have like six boxes full of sketches I've written. Is that right? About half of my I say this is good, and the other half is oh this is terrible. But still they're there. And every once in a while I'll pull out an old one and say let's do that. That's pretty great. But I rule out the reference to uh, yeah, the Nixon joke has to go. <laughs> let's make it. Who's the president now? <laughs> right. Uh, now, you did uh, this off Broadway debut was uh, Little Murders. This became, of course. Uh, a movie with big names and Alan Arkin directed, yeah. but first it was an off-Broadway play, and you did this mm -hmm. with Christopher Guest, 
And who else was in the cast? Paul Benedict. Wow. Love him. A wonderful actor named Vince Gardenia oh, who's yeah. passed away. Genius, Vince Gardenia. Yeah. The father in Moonstruck. And yes. I think he won an Academy Award at yes. least once. No, he was he's fantastic. Yeah, Linda Lavin, who went on to... Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, but I got, again, Alan Arkin had come to see me. We did an all-star reunion show of Second City. Right. And um, he came to, to see it, and he offered me the part in this play. Now, I was living in L.A., and I'd done... Uh, I'd been offered a, a, a sitcom, something like Crack Nuts or Crazy Nuts or sure. something. Sure. Uh, sitcom, that's going to be fun. Then I heard that Second City was going to open a theater in uh, L.A., but Alan Arkin offered me this part off-Broadway, and I couldn't decide what, what to do. So I finally said, no, I want to stay in L.A. So I called him, and his answering machine answered. I said, oh, I changed my mind. I said, Alan, Fred Willer, I just want to tell you, I loved it, and, and the Russians are coming. And I hung up. <laughs> So I told my wife, we'd just been married, I said, we'll go to New York. These shows last a month. Uh -huh. Put our stuff in, in stories. So we went, and it was, um, it ran a year. I left after six months to go into another play. Right. Um, Lily Tomlin was in that play. It was, it was two one-actors called Arf and the Great Airplane Snatch, both uh -huh. for, written by Dan Greenberg. Oh, is that right? Arf had a very funny premise. I was a bachelor who had a dog. The dog was Paul Apprentice in a in a in a what do they call those body suit, uh -huh. beautiful sexy girl. But to me, it was just a dog. And my friend Larry Pressman would come over. He says, "You had a beautiful dog." <laughs> oh yeah, I've had her for quite a while. If you want to walk her? You know that was the premise that he was sexually attracted to the dog. <laughs> to me, it was just a dog. And the great airplane snatch was very funny. There was an airplane where the stewardess was so motherly to one of the the passengers that when the plane she wouldn't let him off the plane I kind of forget the plot right. but Lily Tomlin had a small part Sorry. she had about six lines and got huge laughs with every line wow how did I get into this oh yeah so I was in New York well we had our daughter we got married uh, we were married we had our, my daughter's born I ended up spending four years there and then moved back to, uh, to LA and while you work with Christopher Guest that was the first time you guys had met I don't I think he was an understudy he was very young he was an understudy and then I came back into the show for one week when someone um, uh, got sick, and, and Christopher's in it. But I remember Christopher's mother was a casting uh, director, casting person in L.A. And I kind of remember Christopher, and, but he reminded me that we weren't friends at the time. Yeah. Um, he was an underclassman. Yes. As it were. Get me some coffee, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned the committee in San Francisco. That was just about the time that I was becoming aware of the big hot scene up in San Francisco, and the committee was... Uh, was all the rage. Uh, the committee you were involved in, though, was in Los Angeles? Um, it was a Los Angeles version of the committee? Or was that, I mean, before the Ace Trucking Company? Oh, Ace Trucking, no, I never was in the committee. I had a lot of friends in it. Right. Uh, San Francisco, that was the big, uh, the big company up there in San Francisco. And I, sometimes I would drive up to San Francisco just to see the committee right. and maybe catch a show at the Hungry Eye of, you know, whoever was there, some big big name and I, this was so long ago yeah. that I remember when the very first topless club opened up there on was it Broadway or whatever mm -hmm. Carol, Carol Dota. Dota yeah and now you go up it's all you know topless 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 well that's because Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life took over exactly and, uh, 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 <laughs> right? I was going to get into a... I think a, if... Who, who, who am I, I doing, uh, Kevin? <laughs> You'll never guess. Uh, that, no. uh, yeah, that's... That's, uh, that's beautifully about, horrible. Someone once said that uh, it actually looked like a fun town, Pottersville. <laughs> <laughs> right? It looked like a very fun town. With all the nightclubs and casinos, <laughs> not to mention the hookers. Uh, the... the um, I, I am very interested in the Ace Trucking Company because you got you had your television debut with them, according to your dossier, yes. on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Yes. And now it was 1969, so would that have been still in New York? It was still in New York. Holy we had cow. just gotten together. Holy cow! We had just gotten together, and someone called me and said, "Hey, we're doing this comedy sketch." show and I said yeah, that sounds like fun because I was doing little murders right down the street I said yeah I walked down to this, this club and we got up and it was the, the everything we were just very funny we started out improvising I wrote a lot of sketches mm -hmm. and all of a sudden someone came in from the Tonight Show and saw us say hey we'd like you to be uh, on the Tonight Show we didn't even have a name and they came, came up with corny names and one of our characters did a, a funny sketch of man on the street where he was the head truck driver for the ace trucking company we thought that was such a cliche funny name so right. we'll call ourselves because every city probably has an ace yeah. trucking and ace uh, hardware like the acme, acme yeah. Uh, good, yeah 
And we were on uh, the Tonight Show. Uh, God, we did dozens of Tonight Shows. When we were on one of the last Ed Sullivan shows. That's right. Yeah, I think it was his last season. Um, so, so that, and then we we uh, just took off. We played a lot of colleges, a lot of TV shows. We were on Tom Jones's show. We went right. to London. And um, what was the, the experience like at the time for your family and friends? You being on television suddenly. I mean, it was one thing to be in these sketch shows, but also obviously off Broadway yeah, has a yeah. certain prestige to it. But suddenly, there's something about being on the television. Being a, yeah, yeah. That changes people's perspective. Yeah, I had a friend who worked, who still worked at the the company that I'd worked with when I I left. Right. And my boss saw me on the Ed Sullivan show. He says. He talked more on that show than he did ever, ever did for two years here in the office. I said, well, tell him I got paid more for one show than I did for two years. <laughs> nice. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was, Ed bitch. Sullivan's show was, uh, was a scary show. Must have been. You don't realize. I mean, that's live, and that's the, that was the show. Oh, by you far. You must remember that. The Tonight Show. But Ed Sullivan was for Much the bigger. big room. Much That's bigger. where you went to Vegas. It was primetime television. It yeah. was live. And it, was it, live. it was an institution that was uh, had been around longer and was much more powerful. Yeah, and he put so much. He he added to the pressure. You know, it's just, uh, he I, could he could be he could fly off the handle. Oh yeah, off off camera. He yeah. could be a little bit of a lunatic. Yeah, and they yeah. must have been scared. People who worked oh, there. Oh my God. Backstage. Yeah. Oh oh, I don't even know about that. But the performers, <laughs> you know, there's no. You I, mean, know, I always relax, remember the guy spinning great. plates and then thinking about it years later, looking back on it. He must have been the most nervous guy because oh. you can only drop so many plates before Ed rips off your head and shits down your neck. I mean, really? He's under pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they, he's bringing out circus acts and you can't control what the elephant's going to do, but the guy with the plates. I just remember <laughs> this guy trying to keep all those plates going That's on the right. sticks. Uh, and then Albert Brooks did the great thing. I don't know if you ever saw when he lined up people and, tr and told them a joke, and, and the premise was to get them all laughing, yes. like the spinning plates, all yes. at the same time. Yes, yes. You go back, you remember the joke I told you earlier? Okay, remember that one? Keep laughing, good. Over here, pretty good. Oh, God. Good, Albert Brooks, too. Uh, listen, I'm going to do the wrestling interview. I was going to do Alan Arkin for you, because uh, oh, you had a little good. history there, but I'm going to yeah. stick with Albert for this next question. You know what? I've changed my mind. I'm going to go right into Alan Arkin. <laughs> Can I tell you something, Fred? <laughs> oh, Jesus, yes. <laughs> Can I tell you this honestly? Yes. Always been a fan. <laughs> I'm not sure why you carried Martin Mole like luggage for so long, but uh, I really uh, I really admire you sticking in there with him. <laughs> What's effective is is that you're looking down and not looking at <laughs> this kind of a... Uh, yeah. He, he actually said to me, you notice I, I, I stammer less since you started doing me? Because <laughs> I don't like the sound of it in your voice. And you see him, I got someone sent me a tape of the early, like in the 60s, one of the earliest mm -hmm. Second City tapes. Alan Arkin was probably 22, 23. But you could see right away it was something different. He wasn't just funny with the lines. He, he was... I don't want to say he was a serious actor, but but he was. I mean, uh, like a and serious actor version of a comedy yeah. actor. He was he had something there. He said, there oh it was God. a strange intensity that people yeah. weren't used to seeing in comedy. And uh -huh. Then of course he went on to some great dramatic work, yeah. uh, even early in his career with Wait Until Dark. I mean, he played uh -huh. a sociopath killer in yeah. that. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, you know, probably because um, I refused to let him on the show. Uh -huh. uh, so we'll just talk about it. Um, but I'm also interested in uh, this transition. You were in New York for four years, you say. Then when you come back to L.A., I'm assuming shortly thereafter, uh, there's the, the rumblings of the Fernwood tonight. Yes. Um, I mean, you were, you were plucked, or so it says, uh, by the master at the time um, for that show. Norman Lear? Norman Lear. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was talk about puppet masters and people who were ahead of the curve and the game. Mm -hmm. um, I've I'm, I'm always been curious because I, I, I not only didn't go into too much discussion with this when we had Martin here, the process of the putting together that show, because I can tell you as a fan, as a viewer, when it came on, it was clear like people in the younger age felt the irony, ah. appreciated the subtlety and nuances, mm -hmm. and then all of our parents were confused mm -hmm. by ah. this weird talk show. Mm -hmm. Well, what we tried to do uh, I, uh, is try to do as real a talk show. Um, Martin, occasionally they'd bring on someone from uh, the gong show, mm. and Martin would fly off the handle. He said, I don't want them on. You're supposed to believe, as crazy as these people are, that they might live in this little town of Fernwood and come on. And the writers wrote such interesting 
things. We had the first religious guy who came on who was planning a religious amusement park. This was before Jim Baker. And he had the whole thing, you know, the thing plotted out, uh, the, the, the over the falls for God. But you could almost believe it was real, and people did believe it was real. And they a lot of people called in thought. and said, this, this, where is this town of Fernwood? And I like to think it's a real story. The Ringo Starr was a big fan. And they said, Ringo, would you like to be on the show? And he said, oh, I don't want to go to Ohio, though. To do it. <laughs> but the second year, it was called Fernwood Tonight. And the second year, they, we had to change the location and call it America Tonight. And we did a move to a fictitious city in California because all of Norman Lear's celebrity friends wanted to be on it. Right. Carol Burnett, Burt Lancaster. And so it was wonderful. And they'd come on and almost to a person they would they got the joke and played it dead serious. They were in on it. I mean, yeah. many years later when uh, Gary Shandling did Larry Sanders, there was a sense of that, oh, you know, the celebrities that being in oh, on it. Yeah. But the truth of the matter was Fernwood and America Tonight was uh, the first time I think anyone had seen uh, something played so real, mm -hmm. uh, not a parody per se. Well, they said, you know, everyone said, oh, it, it's, a, it's a parody of uh, The Tonight Show. And none of us wanted, no, it was not a, that, that's a good sketch for three yeah, minutes. Yeah, exactly. Of, this was really... It was my, living, breathing, well, my, actual <laughs> interviews. My mother, you know, Martin Mull's character, there was always this thing where he'd come up from Miami yeah. and had some problems with young girls. And so I was home once, and my mother mentioned him. She said, oh, you know, I, I guess he's had some trouble with the law. But the, I said, Mom, that's just, the, no, that's it's Martin yeah. Mullet's a sketch. Yeah, which is kind of perfect. Uh-huh. That there but was moms, this, like, you know, like, like the thing. Yeah, yeah. Not just moms, but a whole generation, really. Her generation yeah. probably looked at that show as a very strange, well, it's not exactly Merv Griffin in the afternoon. Yeah. It's not something I can really... Uh, Latch up. Why, why is this show coming from this tiny town? Uh -huh. part, I remember the confusion. Meanwhile, everybody my age thought it was the greatest thing. Oh, great! Ever. Yeah, it oh was. My God. Uh, it was. It was so f much fun to do, and we didn't. We were just doing it. They'd bring in uh, some of the early shows. You see the old people sitting in the audience. They would just drag them in from Sunset Boulevard or Hollywood Boulevard, and we just assumed we were doing a little show for ourselves. Right. And after the thirteenth show or something, we took a break, and we had to go out to. Uh, promoted or, or something like that and I, I was in Chicago and people would recognize my voice oh are you you're on that Fernwood tonight so uh, we realized that people were starting to watch it and it it it, it, uh, That's it got very it, popular in, with a small but I, I would come back and I'd say to Norman Lear and then I'd say uh, you know this show is very popular <laughs> oh no no we know that I said no I don't think you do uh, <laughs> because uh, it, it's I guess like, it's like Conan O'Brien and Jimmy Fallon at colleges in dorms, they would watch it. There'd be a dozen people, so the the numbers didn't right. reflect. Now, I remember one of the shows with one of the, the second year when the celebrities came on, Charlton Heston came on, but some of them wouldn't come in for the run through the rehearsal. They just go in, come in for the show. So my thing in the in the show is Martin was going to ask Charlton Heston about his background, his life, and my, the joke was I would keep stepping on his lines. I, you know, what was it like when you're at your prom? Oh, well, my prom. Right. And then Martin was going to get, uh, for, you know, please. <laughs> so we did it, and Charlton Heston was on the show, and he stopped. And he, he wanted to kill me. you. Well, I, that's what I thought. And then at the end, and he, I, at the end, we sent him out to get a, a soft drink or something. And then he left. So I said to Norman Lear, was Ch are Charlton Heston really mad? He said, no, he loved it. You forget, he was an actor. He was just acting this. But the looks he gave me. Uh, <laughs> you thought you were going to die. But almost everyone caught it. A couple of people came on just to promote their latest film. But most of them were, played it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, as I mentioned uh, to you, we get questions live from our audience. And I wanted to uh, bring them into the festivities now. There is a question. Um, I'm not good on... on uh, Foreign history or, or geography. Okay. I will. <laughs> All right. That better not be a category. Yeah. Uh, this one is from at Dan underscore silver. 85 is his Twitter handle. Fred is the master of stealing a scene. They think that's a compliment, by the way. Uh, do other actors ever get mad and ask that he hold back? You must have had uh, someone not not appreciate your uh, stealing a scene at Good some Lord, point? They never said it to me. Maybe they said it to... Actually... Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, I did um, Best in Show. Right. And we did it in Vancouver. And Jim Piddick, who was in the scene, uh, if people haven't seen it, I was the color man for the the uh, Westminster Dog Show. Boy, were you. I was playing um, <clears throat> uh, Joe Garagiola. Yeah. Uh, 
And Jim Piddick, they flew him in from London. He was doing a sitcom, his own sitcom. He flew in, imagine that flight, from London to Vancouver. And he, uh, he was nervous anyway because he had to get back to London and they kept putting off our shooting day. And I had been in the first movie waiting for Guffman yeah. and so much of the stuff had been cut out. Everyone's stuff's cut, cut. He filmed like 300 hours, cut it down to 85 minutes. Right. So everyone was, oh my God, this is gone. <laughs> so I said, well, my, my Joe Garagiola is going to end up on the cutting room floor. When he says action, I'm just going to throw out every joke I could. You know, here it comes, let him. I, in fact, the first night I came in, I said to, to Christopher Guest and Eugene Levy, I said, they'd been filming for about four weeks. I said, have there been a lot of Shih Tzu jokes? And he said, no. I said, there will be tomorrow. <laughs> so I started. And when, after the first, like, ten minutes, Chris Guest said, okay, cut. Jim Piddick, I understand, walked up and walked on to Chris Guest. He said, well, I might as well get on the plane and go back to London. I, I guess you don't need me. And Chris said, no, no, it's coming off great. So it wasn't until, you know, finally the screening, and you realize how much, he, how good he was. He was so deadpan. Well, he had to be off of you. Uh, well, a lot of it was a little bit of the anger, but he's got to get back to London. This guy's, uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> but we've since become really great friends. Really? Yeah, he invites me to his London Christmas party here Is in, right? in L.A., and he comes to our party. He's a great guy, very funny. We've been in the movies together, but I, playing off each other, I will tell you, it was the chemistry was astounding, and, and it wasn't just because he was uptight and you were oblivious. <laughs> there was something else going on there. I mean, you guys really, I don't know, it's one of those lightning in a bottle things that well, just the great, happens. The great thing, he couldn't try to top, top me. He right. had to be that. But by throwing it away and this long suffering, that's it exactly. He played it perfectly, yeah. and uh, yeah, and another one. Um, Catherine O'Hara, working with her, you think you're doing great, you're doing your thing, and Government. she's very quiet, and when you see the film, she's stealing the scene with her, you know, just little facial <laughs> things, she's, uh, she's the best. You I know, love her to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's yeah. great, she's great. Uh, the first experience working on you, so, so there's your answer there. there. That was an answer. I yeah, that was lovely. I didn't think I had no, an no, answer. No, no, um, no. Well, another thing we like to do here uh, uh, is ask a series of, uh, it's a rapid fire, five questions with a this or that sort of answer, like Coke or Pepsi kind of thing. Okay. And we ask the, uh, the, the, the viewers to offer them up personally to you. Okay. In the form of what we call, they come from Twitter, so we call them, uh, normally they come from Twitter, this one's from uh, Facebook, I see, but normally they're from Twitter, so we, we gave it a name, which is the Tweet Five. Team Five! Team five, team five forever now. There's our very own uh, former David Kechner, guest, Dave yeah. Keckner. Mm -hmm. He's wonderful. Yeah, he's another funny guy. Um, a Fred Willard in the making is what, how he referred to uh, Keckner. He's, he's on the rise. All right, this T5 comes to I just saw him do stand-up at the Largo. He was so funny. He does characters. He was so funny. Yeah. Yeah, he, anyway. He really is. He gets lost. There's no him yeah. left. Yeah. It's, it's one yeah. of those deals. I remember your a friend... Uh, uh, and mine, Rob Reiner, who uh, mm. uh, you've worked with, mm -hmm. uh, um, saying that about Chris Guest, that when, when Chris is in a, someone else's movie, he disappears, and there's yeah. no... He's a very small part in A Few Good Men, on the stand as, as, a, as a medical doctor. And so many people had no idea that that was him, yeah. because it's just, there's, there's yeah. no yeah. Chris there. Yeah. Uh, this, so this is um, from Mike Barrison, from the Facebook, so it's a this or that, no correct answer, just Coke or I Pepsi get it. kind of deal. I think I get it. Ron Burgundy or Barth Gimbel? Barth Gimbel, I, I don't know why I even said that. Barth Gimbel. Happy Kinds Bun and Run or Happy Kinds Taco and Run? A happy uh, Kinds Bun and Run. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Red, White and Blaine or what happened? Red, White and Blaine. Uh huh. Moving Violations or Home for Purim? Home for Purim. <laughs> <laughs> for people who don't know that movie, they're, 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 the funny thing is they were filming a movie called Home for Pearl. Yeah, no. And the money people s suggested that it be a little more mainstream. <laughs> right. So nothing else was said about it until finally they were on a talk show. Here he is the star of Home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. <laughs> so subtle you yeah. could miss it. So subtle. It was beautiful. And then the last one, Rhymeraner or Norwich Terrier? I like the Rhymeraner. Rhymeraner. Yeah, it's a kind of breed of dog, I assume. Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> You must know the story. Are we done with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, someone who was going to, they had uh, Yogi Berra on. Mm -hmm. um, and the, 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 the host said, I'm going to play a, a, a word association game with you. I'm going to mention a name. He says, you say the first thing that comes to your mind. And Yogi says, okay. He says, you understand? He says, yeah. He says, Mickey Mantle. 
And Yogi Berry says, what about him? <laughs> 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 Thank goodness we didn't go down that path. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, so from the... Famous I mean, lo favorite logo, St. Louis Cardinals. I, I've been asked that favorite logo. St. Louis Cardinals, you know, the bat with the, with the birds on it. Have it's you oldie. read Three Nights in August, a wonderful book by Tony La Russa and yeah, yeah. Uh, Buzz Bissinger, the guy who wrote Friday Night Lights, one of the great, oh, yes. great yeah. writers. I love baseball books. Uh, if you haven't, I'm going to get you a copy. It's one ahead. of the all-time greats. I'm sure you know the oldest rivalry in baseball is, in fact, St. Louis and the Cubs. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, and this uh, is a fascinating read. I'm, wow. and, so, and I that logo of the Cardinals has been around and it's pretty wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I noticed in your dossier an interesting little uh, fact that, because I, in the early days of Saturday Night Live, <clears throat> those of us who were in the world of comedy wouldn't miss a moment of it. Oh yeah. Uh, and in the early days uh, of that first uh, cast with John Belushi and, and the rest, there was an episode that you hosted yes. around the time of Fernwood Tonight. I think I'd done Fernwood Tonight. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and I just found out through going through your info that it was that w w the genesis was that Muhammad Ali was booked and fell out and, and I think canceled so. or something. And we were at an Emmy function downtown, right? And Lauren Michaels and J John Belushi and a bunch were at a table, and I'd known John Belushi, you know. And my wife says, "Go over and say hello to him." I said, ah, 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 "You know." Go over and say hello. Right. Ah, so finally, went over and said, "Hi, how are you, ah, Fred?" Ah, blah blah blah. And a week later, I, it, 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 that's how scary this business is. If I hadn't gone over and said hello, they might have thought of you know someone else. And then someone said, "Fred, Fred Willard." Um, I think John Belushi liked me because uh, I'd known him, and I saw when the first or second Saturday Night Live was on. Yeah. I, I think not many people had seen it, and sure. it just knocked me out. Yeah. And I was in the improv one night, and John Belushi walked in like he would, looking like he didn't know where am I. I said, John, how are you? I love the show. I said, listen, come on, uh, people don't recognize you. We got to go around and tell people who you are. So I took him around, literally almost dragged him around. John Belushi, you got to watch your show, Saturday Night Live. And I think he liked that, and I think he right. said, Lauren, you know, I got to put Fred Willard on. Because I remember being there the whole week, he didn't show up. He was down in the village someplace uh, where I think <laughs> he just ate himself into a stupor, and I think they they had whips and they'd whip you at night and he'd sleep on a cot. What? And about the fourth day, they said, Fred, there's a call from John Belushi. I said, hello, John. Are they treating you okay there, Fred? I said, yeah. I said, okay, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. So he came in like on Friday, but it was, uh, he was a real... This was season three already, was it, I think, see, I know show. Chevy Chase had gone. Yeah, and, 78. Uh, Bill Murray was on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, uh, it is so, have you hosted it? Have you been on it? I have not had the pleasure. Oh, well, they got the... Yeah. It's been a lifelong fantasy, oh, yeah. so I... I I love stories about the experience because, it's, uh, especially I have, someone with such a sketch background. Yeah, you know, when you're in a troupe and yeah. you have a hand in the writing, it's one experience. Uh -huh. And when you have a, a institution like that, in this case, it was only three years old, but you've got writers. Yeah. Uh, that are geared toward, well, no matter who the host is going to be, we have to have these sketches yeah. ready to go. Yeah. They're not really writing for you per se. Yeah. It it was scary. It's so scary that you just. Be, don't, or you're not scared, just before you go out for the monologue, you can't think how many people are watching. Right. I just lost, you know, I just went out and did it. Yeah. And did the sketches, and here you go, and there, there, there. And I look back, I say, my God, you know, we could have choked up any any, any time there. Um, well, I, I did something I, I was going to do in the monologue, and Lauren Michael said, that, well, I, they may not pass it. Standards and practices may not okay it. I said, I didn't think they had standards and practices. <laughs> and then they had a... Um, it, uh, they, they had the, the, uh, the party after the show down at the number one Fifth Avenue, and I said to Gilda Radner, I said, well, that, that's nice that they, they throw a party, because all the cast was complaining sure. that they were treated wrong. And she says, oh, the, the show doesn't do it. We do it ourselves. The cast members oh put God. on their own party. And we went down to the restaurant, and every cast member sat at their own individual table. Bill Murray was there. Gilda right? was there. Uh, uh, Dan Aykroyd. And Devo was the musical group. Also they from Ohio. In, yeah. Yeah. I thought they were great. And they came in late and they all sat, you know, that yoga position with their legs up on the chair. Did they? And they wouldn't, um, <laughs> the restaurant wouldn't serve them food. The guy came over and says, they won't give us food. They said, the kitchen's closed. <laughs> and I should have made a big statement. Do you know who they are? But I didn't. I was just, uh, the, the week was over and I was happy. But they were, they were fun guys. And it, it was an interesting, um, interesting experience. I don't know if I'd be too scared to do it now.
Yeah, it seems unbelievably nerve wracking. I still, but it's still, you know, it goes from year to year. Oh, Saturday Night Live, dead. It's right. But still, it's the show you watch every week because it's happening. It's it's live. What are they talking about? What's the th yeah? And they bring on people that do. Uh, they can have do Obama. They can bring on Barbara Streisand. Right. It's just uh, occasionally some sketches. You know, oh, let's fast forward to it. But yeah, it's yeah. still the show to watch. Yeah. Another great show was Mad TV. Sure, you've been I on that. Was one, yeah, you've been on it that. It just didn't have the, I don't know what, it didn't get the push that from Fox? Or yeah, I don't know. What happens sometimes with these shows is they, they don't push uh, or promote, I should say. They yeah. don't promote single cast members. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, the early days of Saturday Night Live was an, a, a discovery for a new kind of show. Mm -hmm. uh, no one knew that was even possible, like laughing before it, yeah. uh, a new f type of TV, or Mad Men or Breaking Bad Now. These type of uh, original thinkers get something on the air, mm -hmm. but in the case of uh, uh, not having to promote individual stars, you had a show that yeah. was, was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Whereas Mad TV, I think they should have gone out of their way to promote some individual yeah cast members as a way to maybe yeah. get the word out. It was on 12 or 13 years. And, every and I don't year. think uh, most people could name the no. a cast, Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is very unfortunate because they worked very hard well, for they a were very wonderful. long time. And I had friends on the show and they said every year the budget would go down, down rather than up, you know, 13 years. Wasn't Dick Blasucci yes. behind that? Dick Blasucci was one of the writers. Yeah. Um, they had one of Michael Hitchcock. Was he from Chicago, Dick Blasucci? I yeah. think he was a Chicago guy. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. I met him through the Rob Reiner and Chris Guest yeah. uh, days. He wrote for uh, SCTV, That's which right. every comic must, has to know. That was, to me, that was funnier than Saturday Night Live. As SCTV was Absolutely. just painfully funny. Yeah, well, there was something about the, fi it was all filmed pieces as opposed to live, or so it seemed. Yeah. Where at times they had, um, I don't know, maybe. Uh, more time to work it out or what have you, but uh, or the writers were just that much more talented, I don't know, but I, I, I remember without question being struck by what they were doing on oh, CTV. So brilliant, so brilliant. Do you do Eugene Levy? You, you know, must. he oh. does so many different characters, I, I, oh. I would have a struggle doing just him. If I was on, I, I would probably think of a... Cause I, I've done Eugene Levy, but I, I can't think of... You have to hear it. Oh, Mr. LaRue. Uh, I didn't see you there, Mr. LaRue. I'm sorry. I'll move your car. I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. It's wonderful. Hey, hey they, it, they tell me from the other room of the, of the studio here, the sketch group, uh, you, you can see, uh, you can look them up at the Bang Studio if you want to go to check out Moho's um, uh, Yeah, it's calendar. on Fairfax. If they're local, uh, you know, they know it's on the same block as... as uh, Canters. Uh, Canters, yeah. Right, so go to bangstudio.com if it's, you want to check the dates. It's a nice Sam, earlier in the show, I for, he almost got a little into Gilbert Godfrey there. He said, oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit of Gilbert. Yeah. Just a little. <laughs> uh, we might want to bring Sammy into the uh, proceedings at this point because there's another thing we like to do on the show, and since you're uh, of the Twitter universe, Whoa, yeah, there's yeah. a little uh, game we like to play here. Oh, more with, games. With okay. cash prizes. Okay, all right. All right. Do, is this seriously my t shirt? Do I get to keep it? Do we have There's one in his? We have one in your gift bag. Oh, oh, oh unless, wonderful. Unless that's the perfect size. This is one. Oh, no, I'm just. Uh, it, oh, it's the same size. Yeah, so you can have. Uh, wonderful. Can, yeah, we've got a fresh one for you. You'll get a thousand t shirts, but if you get another one, God, I got a t shirt. <laughs> you do a show, they'll give you. You know, you're, you're getting, you got $10,000. Yeah, and they got a t shirt. I know, That's I've made the remark great. on this show, Fred. Maybe you could appreciate this. You go to location working on a movie. <laughs> Your agent tells you how much you're going to make, but there's a part of you that knows you'll never actually see that. Exactly. Yes. It will go to the bank, yes, it will pay yes, bills, yes. it will get invested, whatever. It's the per diem, the little $60, oh dollars, $100 yeah. cash they give you every <laughs> Yeah. Week and you're like, oh, cash, I have cash. And if you can get away with a piece of a wardrobe, a nice pair of shoes, <laughs> or a pair of pants, oh, God. <laughs> Got a pair it's of pants. It's so true. That's yeah. true. You're I have five your suits. ketone suits from that Eddie Murphy movie that I did that oh, I Dr. cling Doolittle to. Dr. Doolittle 2. Dr. Doolittle 2 that I cling <laughs> to to this you day. You got five suits. I got five suits out of the deal. They took me to Beverly Hills. We're going to set you that, up. You got that ring you're wearing for it free. It was a big sloppy, um, <laughs> a big sloppy uh, studio movie. What, this ring? That was free from a movie. Well, this Columbus is the, the, our friends at Good Art Hollywood. Yeah, but the, they, yes, they, they made this to, yeah. for. Uh, I gave it to you. you well, didn't have to they pay did for give it. it to me. You're 100 percent correct. Uh, yes, I did walk away with this. You, you <laughs> are right. <laughs> I didn't have to sneak it out, but I did walk away with it. Anyways, so we play a game here uh, that is called with new theme song. Who tweeted? Who tweeted? Roll it in. 
Who tweeted? <laughs> yeah! Nice going, Dr. Chen. Oh. It Dr. sounds Chen, like you. I am very impressed. Sammy's the host of Who oh, Tweeted. Yeah, I'm looking up here. Yeah, no, no, right here. It's so much, I was watching your monologue. I was watching up here, like, hey, he's, that's great. You were sitting right here, I didn't want to watch you. Yeah, oh, that's Kevin. Look at this. <laughs> There's the something black. about that screen that draws you in. Sammy, what can you explain to us? Well, this is a very exciting game. Uh, so I'm going to read a series of uh, eight tweets. How are you? Yep. And uh, all uh, eight of these tweets were either written by Tyra, Harris, or Demi. All eight of them? All eight of them were written by or one of those women. Tyra, Paris, Harris, or, or Demi. Demi. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm going to read notes. one, That's and then uh, you guys will ring in by oh. saying your own name. Uh-huh. So you'd say, uh, Fred, he'd say uh, whatever your name is. Uh-huh. And then I'll uh, point to you, and you got three seconds Tyra, to Paris, say either Tyra, Demi. Paris, or Demi. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. All right. You ring and you get one right, you get five points. You ring and you get one wrong, you lose three points. And we're not playing for shits and giggles here. No? Kevin was not kidding. 20 US dollars. That's Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson. Oh. Right there. Right there. That I didn't realize real. that Andrew would dance off the table if you let him. <laughs> That's a great trick. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that one. And Check we'll out the right dancing my Andrew Jackson. There he, goes. There he, <laughs> he can't wait How to get out of here. Well, Derek Hughes with Sam. Sam. That, he says, it is Sam. <laughs> he cured my sore so throat it, when I came in. I had a little infection. <laughs> he laid laid out of hands. And I said, no, I think it was clearing up anyway. It's, it's true. They say money really does gravitate yeah. towards shoes. <laughs> you have a you have a money gravitational pull. I, I love do. it. All right. All so right. Playing for twenty are. bucks. Twenty bucks. Here we go. Who tweeted? Tweet number one. Mm. If you live in the UK, you can buy my eyelashes and nails at Superdrug or Boot Stores. Such a hot accessory to make you look and feel hot. Kevin. I, oh. oh. I, I, I just <laughs> you did, were so close. It's like, what is, you know, and then, uh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, just because you use the word hot, I have oh. to say Paris because that's her word. That is correct. All oh, right. Boy. Now is that keep what you were going to say? I was not going to say that. You no. would have had minus points. I saved yeah, you. Yeah, good. <laughs> you don't want minus points. No. <laughs> All right. Well, if he'd have rang in and got minus points, he'd only be three behind you, but instead now he's five behind you. Why do you have to point these things? Just letting you know how the game works, <laughs> Kevin. Right, You've only thanks. played it a hundred or so times. Here we go. Tweet number two. I'm sitting on the outdoor steps of a lovely Ivy League university right now, appreciating a beautiful albino pigeon. Unique beauty. Fred. <laughs> I will say Tyra on that one. Tie game, ladies oh, and gentlemen. That is correct, goodness. sir. That is absolutely correct. She was Tweet. admiring an albino pigeon. There Number was also three. a photo, a, pi a picture of the pigeon, and then people went after her saying that albino is not PC. And then she had to like do an apology. Good what Lord. is the correct term then for I don't a white remember, pigeon? but that, I just remember like then people pigmentally were like, challenged. Yes, I don't know. Pigmentally challenged. <laughs> I think she had to say like something pigment, like pigment challenge or something. Yeah, I don't care for this one bit. Uh, no, I don't like that either. <laughs> oh. But that's a nice piece of information. Thank you. Tweet number three. Like that very much. Things are heating up here. All right, it's tie game. Here we go. Six In questions left. In bed watching Family Guy. Love this show. So hilarious. Stewie is my favorite. Love his accent. Uh, um, yes, of course. Stewie. Mm. I, I'm embarrassed. Who's the third person? It, it, it's uh, Paris Tyra, Tyra or Paris? Demi. Oh, then I, Fred. I would say Demi. I'm sorry, Fred. That oh, was Paris. Oh. Whoa, it was Paris. She likes Stewie. Yes, yeah, Stewie. Shocking. Mm. But that was Paris. All right. Still, still both Demi, the plus column. Demi more. Okay. Still both um, the plus column. Anybody's game. <laughs> Tom Buzzley. <laughs> Tom Buzzley. My favorite Stewie line. You were on the Family Guy, by the way. We'll talk I about that in a more, second. Yeah, yeah. A, yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. All right. Here we go. Tweet number four. Okay. I'm back in Michigan, quickly becoming my home away from home. Second film I'm shooting here this summer. Great people. Thanks for the warm welcome. Kevin, I gotta go to me. You were correct, sir. Okay. See, I lost Starting confidence. Starting to pull away. Uh, yeah. You lost, lost confidence. I lost, uh, it happens. I you, gotta get, like yeah, you I gotta, gotta, gotta get back in the game. You gotta get back in the game. All right. I'm feeling Where's my now. life coach? I had a life coach, and he, he got lost. He couldn't find Ninth in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> and he lives down there on... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not good when your life coach gets lost. <laughs> it really isn't. And he had the right. He was here yesterday, and he said, "I thought it was Saturday." I said, "No, it's." <laughs> <laughs> What a worthless life coach yeah. decision. <laughs> yeah. All right. Tweet number five. Yeah. There are so many amazing art galleries in Maui. I love it. So many unique pieces of work. Mmm. Mmm. I'm stumped. I would say, uh, uh, Fred, I would say if someone is talking about art galleries in Maui, I would say Paris. You would be correct, yeah. sir. Oh, my, he's back in the you game. Know, she wants to pretend she's uh, into the, you know, Yes, it's course. interesting deduction, of there, Mr. Watson. <laughs> All, All right, he's playing. He's playing a real mental game. Yeah, he is. He's really I'm reading tied into this. Or what? Uh, you're it's, down by three. So if Devin gets one three. wrong, it's a tie. Or if you get one right, you're okay. in the lead. All right, here we go. Tweet number six. I've been loving hats lately. What's your fave fall accessory? Mm, uh, Fred, I should know this. Uh, Fred, I've got to say, uh, Tyra. Don't give me that look. You're sad. in the lead, oh, sir! Oh! Wow! That's a killer look. He's I'm starving! Just get no. you that look. Cover me! Oh, oh, this is... I gotta make it exciting. Yeah, I know. This is very... Oh, wow! We got ourselves a real barn burner, kids! All right. I don't like it when Kevin wins. This is very good! <laughs> so, Here piece plus go. seven, or plus five. This is would be a score of ten to... Or ten to twelve right now. Ooh! Tweet number seven. Oh, that's right. He has 12. Yes. Go ahead. Time for bed. Snuggling up to some cozy Forensic Files episodes. Oh, my. That's on a need-to-care basis. That's a lame tweet. Forensic. Kevin, I to me. <laughs> that is correct. Oh, oh my, wow. Well, I was going to say Tyrus. So it is yeah, okay. all going to come down. To the final. To the eighth and final tweet. All right, Andrew the Jackson, score, do some dancing, you son of a bitch. The score of 12 to 15. <laughs> my dancing 20. <laughs> dancing, dancing, dancing. <laughs> All eighth, right, come on. Eighth and final. final. tweet for all the marbles. Yes. Cooked a delicious lasagna dinner for my love and watched a movie. Now going to bed. Sweet dreams, everyone. Um, oh, yoy, yoy, yoy. Uh, Oh, Fred, I'll say, mm, I'll say not Paris. I'll say uh, who? who, my, who uh, not, 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 not sure. Paris. I'm, I'm just. You sure about that? Paris, Tyra, or Demi? For my love. Or are you? See, I'm double thinking here. <laughs> I'm saying, uh, oh, would she refer to Ashton Kutcher as my love? Oi! <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to be. Um, she probably. I, I got to say, Demi. I got to say. What? I'm, no. I'm, I'm are guessing, you sure you're going with this? Where? What is that? What? what? I, I'm saying uh, Demi, yeah. Fred, I can only help you so much. <laughs> that was Paris. I would have said Demi also, my yeah. love. She's my the only love. one that has my love. And, oh. Between the three of them, isn't she the only yeah, one? Paris that's right. has some new guy. Paris I don't know who it is. Guys. Oh, and she, she cooks lasagna love. for him? Wow. That's pretty nice, huh? I'm surprised that any of them cook. <laughs> you uh, know what I mean? Well. They have a they have a cook. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, your winner on the score of twenty to twelve is uh, Kevin Pollock. Well, thank done. you, yeah. thank no you very much. Feelings. But uh, that was a hell of a game, sir. Yeah. I'm, uh, you I'm still really got a T-shirt. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and learn something, a lot of people. And thank that's you. How you play? Who tweeted? Sam Levine, everybody. Hey. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And the question: uh, Why are you dating Paris Hilton? Because well, she's a great cook. <laughs> 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 I think Fred's right. We all learned a little something yeah. Yeah. from that game. And that's what's most important. I like that a lot. Uh, tell me about, speaking of sidekicks, you were the sidekick to Alan Thick. Yeah, Thick of the Night. That yeah. was an interesting show. Gosh, there were funny th sidekicks. Uh, Arsenio Hall was on that. He had quite a show. I've become good friends, too, uh, with uh, Alan. He's a, a great guy. He really does. was uh, on for a couple of years, that show. Yeah, I think so. He yeah. had a hugely successful talk show in Canada, Yeah, as I remember. Uh -huh. I yes. even remember being a young touring stand-up comedian, and you, you would perform up there, and you would they would book you uh, as an American yeah. comedian. Yeah. Yeah. They, whether you had an act or not, they were excited that somebody was coming from America. And, and it was fun to go to Vancouver. <clears throat> Love that town. Uh -huh. I'm originally from San Francisco, and it, like Seattle, it feels a bit like a sister city oh, in a oh, way. Yeah. And his brother Todd Thick is a, one of the producers on... Uh, 
the funniest home videos and all those things. And uh, and his son is a big uh, music oh, no, actor. Oh, yeah. Right? It's funny how you forget. Yeah, Jamie, the, yes. The uh, Thick, the uh, Alan Nick Thick's kid. Is, uh, he just calls himself Thick. But what's his real name? Oh, no. Really? He goes by the name Thick? No, yes. no, no. That's obnoxious. No. Robin Rob, Thick. Robin, Robin yeah. Thick, yeah. That pretty kid. <clears throat> the pretty kid. Oh, I, uh, not to be confused with Prettykin. <laughs> I was. We were invited to a, a Canadian uh, Thanksgiving party at Alan Thicke's house, and one of the guests, you walk in, and you notice sitting there is Barry Bonds. I mean, Alan really travels in fast circles, and it turned out he's a very uh, congenial guy. We talked to him after the. When was this? Did, uh, this was about two years ago. It was, I think, uh, Canadian uh, Thanksgiving is in October. So. Yeah. And Barry Bonds, he posed for pictures, and he talked, and. Uh, then I was at another party at, at Allen, and Barry Bonds was there. I went into the other room to watch Todd, uh, uh, um, th his son, Robin, yeah. sing a song, and I came back, my wife was sitting talking to Barry Bonds. I'd been in the other room, I didn't know anything about it, and my wife, uh, you know, she said, you just missed that, a long conversation with Barry Bonds. How about that? Yeah. Now, as a baseball fan, yeah. let's... Um, yes, he does belong in the Hall of Fame, they should stay, those numbers. Uh, um, right? uh, steroids or not, you still have to hit that ball. You can't take anything away from him, Mark McGuire. Sure, they had an edge, but who, I mean, the pitchers probably had an edge. Was that your question, I assume? Yes, and I will say, I was going to actually uh, not only ask that, but follow it up with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time that uh, a lot of these guys allegedly were on steroids, or were definitely on mm -hmm. steroids, it was allowed. Yes, it was. It was Although not, not a legal substance, it was not in the uh, bylaws yeah. of the game. Mm -hmm. So, if in our profession it were allowed, mm -hmm. could you imagine how endless the line would be yeah. in order to compete against the other actors and other comedians? Some little drug that would immediately uh, evolve Give funny you a little ideas, edge. jokes. If you're not you doing it, if you're you not bet. doing it, you can't yeah. compete. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think everyone has to put it into perspective mm -hmm. in, instead of just pointing fingers and saying, yeah. you cheated. My kid's in Little League. Why are you setting this terrible example? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's interesting, if you notice the players who say, yeah, I took drugs, I apologize, it was just to recover, it was a mistake, let's move on. They've moved on. The ones who fight it yeah. and argue, and uh, they're the out, of, you know, out of baseball and in court. You just got to say, yeah, I did it, see, I'm sorry. And no one remembers. Right. I mean, maybe Mark Gu McGuire. 70 home, he might, because uh, he didn't, he say, I'm not here to talk about the past. Right. And then someone else said, okay, then we won't you know, put you in the Hall of Fame or something like that. Right. But, um, well, now being no, from Ohio, not. let me ask you about um, Pete Rose. That's a different thing. It I sure think. is. Um, I've heard baseball people say that the one thing that's ingrained and put in the, in the clubhouse, you do not bet right. on baseball. And someone pointed out this, well, he never bet against his team. But someone else pointed out that if he bets for the Reds today, for the Reds the next day, third day there's no bet, someone says, oh, something's up. Yeah. Let's bet again. So I think, I mean, he's got enough. God, he, most hits of any ball player. Right. He makes a fortune. He sells everything. I, I don't know. Uh, I think his problem is um, he, could, he, he would like to manage or something like well, that. Well, maybe we should go down the list of all the players. in. Or let's start alphabetically. In, uh, <laughs> No, Abrams, but I Mark. mean, but I mean, in the Hall of Fame, who themselves were criminals. Oh yeah, and alcoholics. And, oh, in and, the old days. Oh yeah. my goodness. Oh good lord. Yeah, and nobody knew back then. And uh, Babe Ruth ate too many hot dogs. They they think now was a, it was a venereal disease he had. I mean, if you go to uh, Ty Cobb. I mean, Ty just, Cobb uh, bit people in the middle of a game. <laughs> I mean, what are we talking about I here? Yeah. No, I think I, I would say, and they talk well because it's a historical. Uh, yeah. recognition. Yeah. That's my problem. Mm -hmm. if, if you're going to treat it as such, and I'm not the biggest fan, I'm not even talking from an expert's position, honestly, a lofty perch. I just mean in, in, in what's fair, in general speaking. Mm -hmm. If you're going to acknowledge a history of something, and you're going to disallow because of behavior that people already in this historical mm -hmm. Hall of Fame yeah. are thriving yeah. Yeah. with crowns on, yeah. that's hypocrisy. Yeah. Plain yeah. and simple. Um, and I won't allow it, sir. Okay. All right. Now, I got a question for you. Please. Roger Maris is. Yeah. Does it deserve an asterisk? Does, does Mark McGuire, although Mark McGuire hit his 60s in, in the 154 game frame, you know, they, they added eight games. Right. And um, That's more of a problem. Add eight games, and uh, you, of course you have an advantage. People say, well, that, that, what, it's still, a season is a season. It's not. It's eight more games. Yeah. He's hit 61, uh, taking no. 
uh, enhancement drugs, I don't think, as long as they know. Right. But um, and the I think, think about, it needs a little mention. The thing about Bonds that always struck me was his um, slugging percentage. I, I don't know how steroids could possibly yeah. allow you that insanely high and effective slugging percentage. Yeah, yeah well, that's not... Now, I don't want to go too far off sports because one of the things you did that I absolutely loved was portraying in a drama Howard Cosell. Isn't that funny? It's because I did... Um, the, the Joe Gragel oral in, in Best in uh, Show. And I got a call. Um, a producer? Holly Hunter. Oh, wow. Holly Hunter. Fred, we're doing the When Bobby meet, Meets Billy, I'd like you to play uh, Howard Cosell. I said, I can't you know, get Billy Crystal. There's a uh, hundred comedians who do it. Oh, no, we really want you. And I know it was just because I'd done in Best in Show and got a lot of play. So I finally, I turned down about three times and finally said, the hell with it. If they want me, I'll do it. So what I tried to do is the mo a realistic one, but I wasn't doing, I w what I was doing, it wasn't actually, I, I remember seeing him on The Odd Couple, mm. Howard Cosell, but there was a sports show out here where the guy, I don't know if you remember, the guy would play a Howard Cosell tape that they got when he was recording something, he says, who goofed, I got to know. It was a sports <laughs> show, his son is now on the news now, do you remember Sam, you're probably too young to remember, no, his know. son is a news guy now. He had a 15-minute sports show. Funny, he'd play clips. Wow. But he'd do it. Howard Cosell, who goofed? I've got to know. So I just kind of got that rhythm. Right. And I didn't try to do it uh, extreme. I just no, kind of played Howard Cosell. I mentioned Cosell. it because it was a dramatic yeah. portrayal. It yeah. was not an impersonation. It was not an attempt to be funny like the best in show thing. Yeah. It really was a Very dramatic. Very serious. Yeah, yeah, not making fun. And Ron Silver was going to play Bobby Riggs. I said, ah, that's not right. I walked on the set and he looked. It was Bobby Riggs. It was uncanny. The blonde, uh, yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the scene I did with the, the, the actress, I forget, but she was playing the feminist uh, a real uh, tennis uh, pro who was very pro-feminist and I looked over at her and they were talking about Billie Jean King win winning and she was crying, the actress was crying wow. so I guess she was doing it because the, the tennis player did I, I didn't realize how important it was for women at the time Oh sure. That uh, Billy Jean King had beat Bobby Riggs, even though it was a, a silly exhibition. She yeah. was crying. It wasn't it about so feminism, so uh, I mean, it was for many of them, but it wasn't just that. Yeah. It was also that Bobby was so sort of verbally abusive. Oh. Towards her and about her. Um, and there's a sense of, of course, sisterhood, but there's also a sense of overcoming. Yeah. And a, a bit of a. Um, uh, Good, well, not good versus evil, but um, sort of, um, what do I want to say, David and Goliath. The little sense yeah. of the, the monster yeah. that, that is taken down. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I, I, you know, we, it's easy to root for the underdog. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, uh, it either becomes an emotional involvement or, or it isn't. So I, I think that had a lot to do with it. Um, I, I noticed, uh, as much as I enjoy your dramatic work, Mm -hmm. Your four-time Emmy nomination mm -hmm. yeah. comes from lead guest star in a television series. Yeah. That's not easy to do because yeah. you're there for the week. Yeah. And in the case of everyone, Everybody Loves Raymond, you got three nominations. Yes. So clearly you were there for yeah. several weeks, yeah. but you weren't actually a regular on the yes. show. And yeah. I, I, I find that to be maybe the hardest way to stand out. Because every week, there's a new guest star, mm -hmm. often more than one, mm -hmm. on every one of these shows. Mm -hmm. They don't always are able to stunt cast or somebody of your talent, mm -hmm. as they call it in the biz. <laughs> but every week, there's a new guest star. Yeah, yeah. On every, so there's got to be way more competition, mathematically yeah. speaking. Yeah. I, I, I guess, uh, I, I, I think I had some goodwill in the business from some of the things I've done. And also, I didn't like the role of, the, of Everybody that Loves Raymond at first. It was so straight and such, such a tight character. You know, I didn't have a television set. And I called my wife, mother, let's... Uh, but I guess people saw that and said it got such a departure from some of the other things. So it was very nice. I, I got so much from being on that show. Phil Rosenthal, the producer, is still a good friend. and, and he, He's taken us on his private plane to place. The okay, he's gonna call. We're going to New Orleans to see something. Come in. You and your wife want to come. I love Great it. Great guy. And um, so you just did a little bit of Phil Rosenthal there. He just 
when he, just uh, uh, Phil, Is that he, he right? did a little bit of Phil. <laughs> Without and knowing. he has screenings at his house, we invited, it's very, just great. And um, this last one was for Modern Family. Yeah, And after this while, year. Yeah, and you know, suddenly I said, and it came as a complete surprise, but right. then I said, you know, I might have a chance, because I was up against John Hamm, Come on, he's good. Uh, he can't win. That's men. not fair. He could be. Yeah, it's not fair. Uh, um, Ian uh, Wallach, Eli Wallach. Wow. Well, it wasn't really he's a He's had funny, a long career. Long career. It wasn't that a funny role. A couple of others. Um, who was the guy that won? I see how fleeting it is. <laughs> it's so uh, true. I, I, I want to say John Michael Higgins. What's his name uh, from uh, Glee? Oh, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris. I said, ah, come on. He's got his own over. show. He's got his own show. Also He's not nominated fair. This. Um, he hosted last year. I said, I might win this thing. But do you prepare a speech? Right. No, that's a jinx. But then you don't want to go up and say, uh. Right. Uh, so I sat there, and the, just as they were about to read, the two comic guys from Saturday Night read, read it off. I said, maybe they did that because they're going to say Fred Wood. But for some reason, the minute they started to say the name, I said, it's not me. And I was actually a bit relieved that I didn't have to walk up there. But uh, Neil Patrick Harris. And then the next day in the paper, I wanted to cut it out because was, he was holding up two. <laughs> 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 but listen, if you lose to him, you can't be too upset. No. What if I didn't lose... Um, I think to be honored, quite frankly, with the nomination, to be culled from hundreds of guest yeah. stars to choose yeah. from, to be in the top five. And uh, it's the parties. You know, some great parties. Uh, you go to parties, they're there great. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's about a t-shirt and a party. T-shirt. I didn't get a t-shirt. The bastards. But we got some nice <laughs> gift things. Uh, uh, talk I to got me nominated about, plus, for four Emmys, and all I got all I got. And plus, Emmy nominee is more trippingly <laughs> off the tongue than Emmy winner. Emmy nominee. Yeah. People not in the business think, oh, wow, Emmy nominee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there yeah, were yeah. 150 nominees this year uh, <laughs> <laughs> and only 17 winners 17. Um, talk to me a little bit about the uh, the voiceover stuff with uh, Family Guy and also the Simpsons you you were on once I did the Simpsons what a great show to be on uh, I, I played I think a um, travel agent well, these two knuckleheads would know for sure who. Yeah, the Simpsons. Fred, they're who, such ardent fans. I remember it was the uh, they went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we didn't have tickets. That was fun, but they just sent me gifts. It was just a great show to be on. They were, and they can get anyone they want. Oh boy, can they! Oh boy, it's a nice hell of a compliment. Quite it frankly. is. Uh, no, but I mean, you watch it. They'll get uh, uh, Peyton Manning. Oh, was yeah. that Peyton Manning? Yeah, we had Mick Jagger in here last week. Oh, geez, no kidding. Yeah, yeah and Keith Richards and Sister Dunn Smoker. Uh, <laughs> Why are you doing but, great, Keith Richards? <laughs> what was that? You just threw that well, away. Uh, um, have you spent any time with Keith Richards? No, I was not there on uh, uh, on that show. He, they, but they told stories. Of course, they had stories about Keith Richards. Yeah. You, sh you can't smoke. I know it's bad for the health. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and what do you do? You don't care. Keith, you're going to have to leave. And plus, I've Entourage, had 17 you, blood transfusions. Don't Entourage, tell me it was bad yeah. for the mouth. <laughs> I watch Entourage, and they get anyone. They get a, a cameo from, geez, they just said they had uh, Ryan Howard from the Phillies on doing a quick yeah. cameo. They had Jerry Jones. That's just great. To, wouldn't it be great to do a show like that? Let's get. Uh, Did you get anyone yeah, of that? Let's get uh, Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, he'll do it. We'll do. Well, they somehow got me. Um, That's great. But I did. Yeah, was it fun to do? You were on Entourage, huh? Sammy was on an episode of Entourage as well. <laughs> That's right. I, I, I'm catching up. I, I wasn't into it the first few years. Now we've been addicted to it. Sam it's, it's is just... in a fan favorite. They did a vote. They did. <laughs> really? They, did, they yeah. did. They did a vote, and he was. Uh, they picked like the. Going to the valley. Episodes. You got to hydrate. I'm sure mm -hmm. that fan being a fan favorite we'll had see, everything to do with me. I yeah, haven't anyway. seen it yet. Yeah, it's all right. I, I, I just want to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was on a show. <laughs> Incidentally, the the roast. What was the the roast that he did, Gilbert? Gilbert. That you see when you see yes, uh, when I know you what you're see uh, Jeffrey Ross falling on his knees. Uh, I forget what it he was did. Hugh but Hefner. I, it was when he did the Aristocrats. No, no, it was no. Gilbert. It was on the roast. Oh, and Bob Saget, the roast. Bob oh, Saget yeah. roast. I mean, he just. I mean, it's so inappropriate and just. Um, yeah. Um, Anyway, everyone's a, you, you just love, every comic loves, it's like we love uh, uh, Rodney. Yeah. Everyone loves uh, Gilbert. But uh, in the business. Exactly. A lot of people not in the business, I don't care for him. I think you have to see him originally on stage. You do have to see him uh, seemingly come unglued uh, <laughs> live to truly appreciate the, as opposed to just a guy scrunching his face and screaming. <laughs> yeah. There's, um, and also he's a brilliant writer. Boy, I remember uh, so many years ago. 
him just his his mind would be as abstract thinking as a Stephen Wright yeah. or uh, in, in his um, premises. Yes. And it, that's when, as a fellow stand-up, I started to appreciate, oh, this guy's a great writer. It's not just shtick. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Very bright. Uh, and the Family Guy experience was fun for you, too? Um, I, you know, I a, almost forget. I think I played a policeman on that. There's a movie coming up you did a voice work on did called I? Cat Tail. I keep hearing that. I don't remember what the heck it was. You know, it's a lot <laughs> of... It's, <laughs> it's taken a long time to get distributed. To be honest with you, this may just be... Uh, no, no, I've heard that several times. IMDb nonsense. You're on... Uh, Cattails. I, I think I did it. And uh, Fred and Vinny ring a bell. Fred. Oh, Fred Stoller did a wonderful little independent movie, which I have not seen. I played myself in it. Oh, I love it. It was a, a biography of a friend of his, a very eccentric friend, uh, who Vinny unfortunately something. passed uh, uh, away. A very sad guy, but he did. I, uh, Fred Stoller is another very rare, funny guy. Yeah, he sure is. And, you guys uh, know him from Seinfeld. Fred Stoller. Oh, yeah. He and from uh, everyone tell. loves Raymond. He would play Raymond's yeah. cousin. Right. He's Jamie, very much like Ray. You can tell Jamie who Fred Stoller was from Seinfeld because I don't know if she knows just oh, by his Christ. real name. He was. Yeah. A, oh God, I haven't seen that one in years. Yeah, uh, I, I, I know Fred that. from the stand-up world. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, I, I, Fred and Vinny. Yeah, I, I did do that. Yes. And the Shrinking Charlotte. That's the one I never got to do. It was going to be. Um, the young actress who passed away. Uh, Brittany years. Murphy? <laughs> Brittany Murphy. They kept calling me about this. Shrinking Charlotte was going to be in Atlanta, and I didn't want to do it. For right. the, I was at the stage, I said, oh, I don't want to go down there for four days. So they kept moving the date back, and then kept moving the date back. Then finally, uh, she was going to be in it. Right. And uh, then she died uh, very sadly. Well, this is what the IMD but oh, D God. DB did, does. Did they review me? Well, no, I no. haven't even been it. Well, I know. Of Fred course. scores big in Shrinking Charlotte. <laughs> what, Wait a minute. What they do is, when uh, putting together your dossier, we we look into the future to uh -huh. see what's coming out, what's uh -huh. still, what we haven't heard about yet, <laughs> and they will list. And I have stuff in there about me on my page that, and people ask me, and I go, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's almost like if someone sends you a script, they call IMDb and say, <laughs> Yeah, we got an offer out to Kevin Pollock. You better, but whatever it is. Well, also what you do a lot of days, you'll do one one day in a film and then three months later they change the title of the film then you say they'll say hey I understand you did a show with a movie with Alan Arkin no uh -huh. and, but Alan did it another day do a little more Alan Arkin there looking at oh, I'll tell you what Fred oh, God. Uh, can I be honest with you do you believe we've been talking for a hundred minutes that's how long we've been at this a hundred minutes you, I, and I gotta be I, I gotta from the bottom of my heart can I just say this truly it's a, not only the first time that the show has started where the guest was not wearing their shirt I think a lot of people at home are happy that you kept your pants on um, <laughs> because like Milton Berle this, you know that you're famous throughout the industry that's yeah that's that's the that's the what across I have to bear the huge that Fred Willard has again. <laughs> Show just enough to win the bet, Fred. <laughs> I wish would that be a? I, I love it on, on the roast of. Uh, uh, that's the old. That's the old bit, right? Show just enough just to win the, the bet. Yeah, to win the bet. Um, <laughs> oh, I forget him. Tommy Lee. Oh. Well, one of the roasts. They oh. kept putting him down. Oh. His penis is so. I said, oh, how embarrassing it must be. Yeah, right. The joke. Oh, God. Stop making fun yeah, of stop my. Stop making joke of my how my tripod nature. <laughs> uh, I can't thank you enough, honestly. But well, you could, yeah. <laughs> what happened to the Larry King thing? Did we have a Larry King thing? You're gonna, you're gonna oh, have to come oh, up with that. I do momentarily. Oh, okay. I want to give you just a couple seconds here to uh, to regroup. Okay. I'm gonna look to the audience and see uh, if, yeah, we've got another uh, tweet five while you um, gear up. This one from uh, Fezziwig Press at Team Five. <laughs> Thank you, Team Dave Koechner. Team Five. Team Five. At Fezziwig Press. This is the uh, this or that question. Shatner or Takai? Wow, uh, Takai. George, it was so funny. I'm Wally Wall or Epic Movie? Epic Movie. Boy, underdog, loved, underdog. Right. Loved you in Wally. Thank you. Bill or Mandy? Bill or Mandy? I don't even know where they're going. Uh, it's a cartoon. I, I'd say Mandy. Sure. That in is. honor of Mandy Patinkin. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy Patinkin. I always kid my wife that she was the uh, that Mandy Patinkin called. He wants to know if you're ready to buy another album. She loves, <laughs> she, she loves him, and I. Uh, <laughs> and she has the album. She gets so mad. She, she's one of my. That's funny. It's just funny to buy out any. <laughs> Dear Mandy Patinkin caller, he wants to release another album. 
<laughs> Larry the Cable Guy or Leno? Uh, I, I love them both, but I gotta say Larry the Cable Guy makes me laugh. He's kind of, oh, go ahead, is there more? Just the last one. Okay. Mull or Romero? Oh, I gotta say Martin Mull. Sure. Yeah, he's just, uh, don't lose any sleep over Ray Romano. <laughs> he's got a nice career, my friend. They yeah. both do. What were we just gonna say? What is it, Vanny Patinkin? I have found something there. Oh, uh, Leno, Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, comic, I mean, they kind of put him down, Larry the Cable Guy. He makes me laugh. Right. He just makes me laugh. And I did his Christmas special. You did? And he, and it just, and I'm so, and I love Christmas. I love, it was a big set, red and lights, and it got a little X-rated, which I don't approve of. X-rated and Christmas don't match. But he was awfully funny. But he, he pretended, I, I mean, he was such a fan of mine. Oh, Fred, God. And he, he, he told me a joke. He said, here's what I'm going to do. And he talks pretty much like this. He, he told me the joke, he says, on the show, it's not gonna sound like, it's gonna sound more like that. You know, he yeah. does that, right. well, I'll tell you, you know, that you get, to, get it, what's it, get her done. Right. But I listen on the comedy radio, it just makes me laugh, just silly, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but you've appeared on Leno's show now doing sketches for him. Oh, over 80, yeah. over 80. But I, I haven't since he moved at 10 o'clock. Right. Very, very uh, uh, controversial. But I thought, what's, what's he going to do? We offered him a 10 o'clock show. He did. Didn't they move him back to him? But he's, he's never used me. Right. And one of my friends was a writer. They got just let him go. So I don't know. It, it just seems, not that, I mean, every time I do one, I would come home and say, I, I shouldn't do any more of these. But I did it close to 90. And yeah. it was always great fun. And, and Jay is just one of them. He, he can hone a joke and is so quick. Um, it, it's a study for just kind of that kind of comedy to watch him work. It was always about editing for him. Oh my God! Just I, get the I, yeah. This I the, learned that uh, yeah. very. Yeah, he's very a, but he, and he and appeals. I we still watch, we'll watch uh, headlines. I'll watch his monologue and watch Letterman's top ten. Jimmy Fallon is great. But what, what's going to happen? When Conan comes back. There's Conan, Conan comes Conan? back November eighth. You're yeah. brewing under the top one hundred. You're going to be up there some pretty soon. <laughs> All right, now Fred, it is time for the Larry King Fred game. Miller, Fred Miller, Fred, tell Fred we love him, but we're booked solid. <laughs> 2011, he's free. All right, I'm, well, look, we'll commence him in for the 2012, the English Olympics, London. Olympics, yeah, we're booking that two times. Uh, that bit's not going anywhere. Okay. I'll tell you what, Fred. I'm going to let you off the hook here. Alan Arkin, we're directing that, he would direct that play. He'd come in every day and he'd just think, he says, I don't care what the cr critics say. Fuck it, it's a good play. <laughs> it was just wonderful. Just, <laughs> just great to work with. He was great. Oh, and then I did, so, uh, this is, uh, are we going to no, 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 30 great. second story? Uh, Mike Nichols, at the height of his fame, came to see the show. Uh, we were right at the end of, of, of previews, and we were at a party that night. Mike Nichols came up and talked to me. Fred, I really enjoyed your performance. He said, in this one scene, certain part, have you thought of being a little more specific? What does that mean? <laughs> I said, um, that's very interesting. Yes. All right. Thank you. He said, but I enjoyed it. So the next day, I came up to Alan. And I said, uh, Mike Nichols said I should be more specific. <laughs> and I'm assuming Alan would say, yeah, I was saying that. But Alan says, what? <laughs> How dare he give you a note? <laughs> he said, I'm the director. You're doing it fine. But it was so, it's like Steven Spielberg. Right. Uh, How dare he mention to, but that was nice. Alan Arkin knew exactly what he wanted. Another trivia story, he, uh, when they did the movie, right. uh, I did not do the movie because Elliot Gould had did, done the show on Broadway. It had been a failure the year before. This is Little Murders. He bought the rights to it, so he did my role. Alan Arkin took over the role that uh, Andy Duncan had, had done. Mm. He didn't use Linda Lavin. He used uh, someone else. So um, I, I, Alan Arkin is wonderful. And every, once, every once in a while, I'll run into him, and he's just great. Oh, Fred, it's great to see you great again. To see, great to see you, Alan. How are you doing? Okay? Everything you know, I I've been okay. I saw your son with Adam in the movie Serious Man. I loved him. He's still coming along very well. Uh, you know what? He's he's a little too um, high and mighty these days. Uh, he doesn't take my calls. Oh, no. I sent him a gift. He sent it back. I don't even oh, think he no. looked at it. Return it, folks. Okay. You know? I tell him I still watch Picket Fences. <laughs> All right. All right, people was tweeting saying, "Where's what's with Larry King?" Yeah, he's not getting off. It's so so to regroup. It's a, a bad Larry King impression, mm -hmm. and then uh, re reveal something about Larry, mm -hmm. and then you go to the phone. Uh, <laughs> I'm 
No, I've, I've, I've frozen up because I'm thinking of the... Uh, uh, of the when uh, I first explained the game within oh, two seconds, it. okay, you, yeah. you said oh, you just explained it when I explained to you. Like, first, I don't want to do it when I told you the first time. Literally, within two seconds, you go, "I got one." Yeah, I, I, I don't want to do it. Let's just go. Just come. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the best improv ever. All right. I dearly miss my ex-wife because she would give me a personal prostrate prostate exam. I blew it. <laughs> she would give me a personal prostate exam, and health is so important. For say, Indiana, come in. <laughs> it's a different topic. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's but I beautiful. thought I'd go a little R-rated, you know, the prostate. Oh, you have well, to. Did I cut the I, I said you give your wife give me a prostate <laughs> exam. No, you don't want to do that. No, you don't. My mother used to give it to me as a child, <laughs> so I felt that. <laughs> Extended play. That, Fred is getting a little too. That's, that was the bonus. <laughs> that was the bonus track. Kevin's. Thank you so much, honestly, and may oh. I say wholeheartedly, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was yesterday. I understand. Yesterday, that's true, but uh, it's my birthday month. It is. Happy birthday, indeed. I listed at um, uh, 99 cent store on Lancashire Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we end strong. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, don't move. While, uh, sit there uncomfortably while I wrap things up, if you don't mind. Um, the, uh, I want to thank everyone uh, who worked. It be another five or ten minutes. I <laughs> worked so hard. On this. I can't help it. I, I'll be out when I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, our crew uh, has been just outside the studio walls working uh, so very, very hard to make sure the show uh, came to you live and was recorded beautifully to play an infinitum. Um, let's see if we may. I wonder what they've been up to for the past hour 50. Dance contest. <laughs> what, what, what's happening? For, uh, Dr. Chen, stealing it all. Talk about cutting in. He's totally cut. Look at those moves. He's not even, he can't even be connected by bone tissue or anything. Wow. That was unbelievable. Is that and is they that, should be working. They're supposed to be working. Yeah, oh, that's, that's the, they're having a dance contest. That is... I, I, clearly, I need to start paying these people. No wonder they outlawed dancing in that small town in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> it's very I once dangerous. Saw, I once saw Kenny Chen challenge a complete stranger in a casino to a dance contest and win. <laughs> wow. Broke it right down live on the casino floor. In Caesars. That's right. That was like a year ago, actually. Yes. Oh yeah! It's like a, that was almost like a Bill Brasky story. One time I saw Kenny Chen. <laughs> Kenny Chen. I'll be honest with you. That trip, I really thought we would lose Kenny. I thought someone would just, one of you would just say, you know, he has. Well, we kept losing Nagrin. He would he just disappear. <laughs> Remember, every night he would just disappear, and then we would find out the next day he like went and rode the monorail. <laughs> <laughs> we had him in, in a smoking jacket with hookers, and he was just on the monorail saying, "Have you seen Bally's?" <laughs> <laughs> I could never find the monorail in Las Vegas. I end up on that no, the number two bus going downtown. It takes an hour and a half. To get <laughs> <laughs> but it's scenic. I can never find the, the monorail. Uh, oh my goodness! Next week, the lovely and delightful and hilarious Kathy and Jimmy will be here. Uh, all the guests are up on the site under show schedule. Uh, take a look. Join us when you can. Uh, can't wait, as always, to see you next week. Until then, please get out of my face.